Hello everyone and welcome to APM Research Sigils Part 2. This is FPB Angel and on the panel with me are One Conscience and Rose. If you are new to APM Research, you will find that our research and decodings indicate we live in a technological construct that has very intelligent design. Geo, Petro, Hieroglyphs, Sigils, Cartouche and even some sacred geometries are one and the same tactical type schematics of technologies relating to the underworld. Technologies that are responsible for creating and moving luminaries and are pretty much involved in most of nature itself. So hello ladies and hello to all you fine people in chat. Hello. Hello everyone. Okay, previously in sigils, we showed sigils numbers 1 through 36 and how we analyze and decode and cross-reference them with other research materials. In the last video, we stopped at sigil 36, so today we will be continuing from sigil 37 onwards. I'll hand the microphone over to Unconscious now to carry on where we left off. Microphone over to you, one. Okay, thank you. Um, so we left off and we're going to start on 37. Do you have the sigils? I did have, but they've now just vanished. <laughs> Another piece to cut out. <laughs> Would you believe it? I was just going to screen share it and it vanished off my screen. But no worries, yeah, I'm loading it back up. I'll just make sure it screen shares. It didn't show in the list. Would you believe it, people? There it is. Just make sure it's uh, presenting the full screen. And off we go. Okay. Um, so we'll start at number 37. Are you guys seeing them? No, it's Ooh. black. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm seeing a black screen. Yeah, I can see them playing my side. Mm, oh, hold on, I'll try a different media player. Stand by. We'll get it together. Okay, sorry about that. We'll try this other player. I don't know why that played last week. Now today it doesn't want to play. <laughs> right, fingers crossed you can see this one. You can see that, yeah? Yeah, it's a partial picture though. Yeah, I'm just, right, here we go. It's playing now. That's it. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll start out at number 37, which is um, Osmoday. Oh, look at that one. That one looks nice. Um, so Osmodei is a king. Um, he is said to have a seal in gold and is listed as the number 32 in, according to rank. 
this one is very strong and powerful and appears with three heads one like a bull the second like a man and the third as a ram has he also has the tail of a serpent and from his mouth comes flames of fire he sits upon an eternal dragon holds a lance with a banner amongst the legions of Amamon, and he governs over 72 legions. Um, he is the master of troops, and he is known for mathematical skills, astrology, and gives the ability of forecasting. He has also been listed as a fallen angel. And just for the record, um, of all these ones we're going to go through today, 27 of these have also been listed as fallen angels. And if you guys don't know um, what we've depicted a fallen angel as, it's something that's been placed in the ground so that's how we are coming to the conclusions that these fallen angels have been strategically and purposely placed into the ground and they're pieces of technology and we can see that by what's on screen on sigil 37 that these relate to um, processes when you look at them and compare them to electrical schematics and and stuff like that but i'll hand it over for you guys' take on it lovely information there one fantastic yeah and nice uh, 72 now we mentioned the 72 there we do have the 72 on the grid uh what i like about this one also is that you know it, it kind of references a pole with the um the loop over it which is what we've seen happening on the mimic map you know, that could be like the equator represented there and a looping over it. Yeah, that makes sense to me. We actually see one of the signals shoot up like that arrow in a way. It kind of comes up and, and curves around to hit the west side of the world. Yeah, and as with the previous ones, any crosses we see, we, we as, a, as a rule now, what we, you know, we factor in magnetics or electromagnetics as the case maybe so uh, yeah you know that's what i'm seeing through the same same information you're seeing in various other glyphs technical blueprints of a kind uh i'll pass it over to you rose if you've got any input on this one yeah i am um, wow <laughs> that is just so much information there isn't it when even just looking at it it looks really busy and important and exciting and go 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 there's a lot of movement in it um i'm intrigued with the three heads of the bull the man and the ram to my mind um as a, as someone that studies syncretism i would suggest that that would maybe um be describing the process in the spring um because it's a strong powerful force it's um the seal is gold it's a king so that's exalting that's when the sun exalts in the first three months where all the growth and everything happens it um it has the serpent's tail but and sits on the eternal dragon so again to my mind astrologically speaking um that again suggests a process at the beginning of the um the real year um in springtime when it's all go 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 grow 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 um because um which would also link with the fallen angel connection because it's directly describing a process underground and also with it being you just stated uh, more likely to be the west side that again um 
supports that because astrologically spring starts from west to east as the way the astrological clock turns as opposed to um, clockwise um, in our um, linear experience so also because it's forecasting it's for me forecasting doesn't necessarily mean um, looking into the future because they've described that kind of process differently in previous sigils but forecasting is again growing so that's why i think this is possibly a springtime um, process Fantastic information, Rose, and nice that you, you referenced it there with the astrological calendar because I've got something coming up at the end of this that, that uh, concerns what you just said. <laughs> That's a surprise for the end. <laughs> right, back to you, one. That was amazing information, indeed. Just on the first one. Oh, I was Doesn't muted. It? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I was talking away. The next one is GOP. <laughs> um, again, the process of GOP is he is known as a great president and prince. Um, just a side note that we need to really look into these titles that our countries have. You know, they're taken from... A lot of these processes, you know, they have uh, certain areas they're running, they're presiding over pro um, providences. So Gop is a president and a prince. He is known when the sun is in the south, led by four powerful kings, and he is known for philosophy and humane sciences. He serves the great king of Amaimon and can make a mess among house spirits. He was once from the order of power. Um, Gop is also known as a fallen angel. Yep, another another fallen angel. It seems uh, uh, so. In other words, it's one that's working. <laughs> you know, we, originally we placed fallen as uh, possibly broken, but it wouldn't make sense to keep reference. And then if they're no longer working and probably got scrapped, so that's where we come from on the fallen now. So you know, once correct what you said earlier, uh, Prince again. You know, say say exactly the same again. You know, kings, queens, titles. This is where all modern society gets the title in from. It's coming from the technologies below. So yeah, I have to agree that. And obviously, being a prince, it's uh, obviously got some kind of entitlement over other type technologies. Uh, interesting that the center of it as well. You've got the cross in the center with the four dots, like what we see on our grid. Very interesting. Over to you, Rose. <laughs> so I definitely think it's um, a, a piece of equipment as opposed to a process this time, don't you think? And um, and then even though because it's giving us a specific place, and it was because president means government. So if it's a, it's a. Um, so the way I'm starting to see these is because it used to once was the order of power. So maybe it's, it's physical process changed. But when you actually look at the sigil, like you said, it's also quite symmetrical. And those round bits that we've used with modern day um, technical terms are usually attached to a line or part of the circuit where these are hanging about you know in like suspended 
and I also was he serves another one that's quite interesting too so it's almost like he's a part of something else that can do more than one function yes yeah definitely yeah it's connected to a chain of others and it's obviously got um priority over some which is what gives it its title as in prints but it's connected to obviously to the larger processes going on so yeah yeah good deduction that brilliant well that would also make sense why he actually has two titles um president and prince Yeah, so he's uh, obviously entitled, you know, he's got entitlement that gives him a, a piece of geographic location over any others surrounding it. That's what it's suggesting, isn't it? Yeah, and as a fallen angel, it's something in situ as opposed to a moving part, like what enables the sun uh, return through the underworld. Yeah, more pieces of the larger mechanism, <laughs> 100%. Over to you, one for 39. Okay, one more thing on the 38, how it says when the sun is in the south. I just kind of noticed the symmetry going on as well, but... Um, you know, I just wanted to reiterate that this one is probably more to the south, whereas the first one we looked at was to the west, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. I would say it's uh, looking at the, you know, the four dots with the cross in the center. It's got to be near one of the sectors that we have them in on a grid in the south, obviously. Yep. And we need to... Um, no, that's it. That's all I have on that one. Um, next is Furfur, also known as Furter. Uh, this one is a powerful great earl. This one rules over 26 legions. This one is compelled to enter a triangle where true answers to every question are given. This one can cause love, create storms, thunder, lightning, and blasts. This one teaches secrets on divine things. He is depicted as a heart or a winged heart. In Latin, it means bran. I'm not sure what bran means. I'd have to look it up. Um, wow. Did you look it up? <laughs> I am. Very just, interesting. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, this also comes from the Latin word scoundrel. And he is also known as a thief. <laughs> it's very interesting information. I like what it you references that triangle there, because you know you could if you flip that upside down, you're looking at the pyramid. So it's it's for compressing energy to a point. It's it's suggesting to me straight away. It's you know, that's exactly what it's doing. We're looking at at the magnetism. We're gonna get more into that on the next video. You I can think see what it might be your volcano one. Do what? This might be your volcano. Yeah, same, because... same process, Rose. You know, it's it's creating things like that and also what's generating what we would see seeing called tornadoes. As it, you know, on, a, on an upward flow, it would create uh, the, the tornado, the vortex that's creating tornadoes. Yeah, because uh, one of the explain how the, the difference of the uh, earthquakes, I mean the um, volcano eruptions, and some are timed and some aren't. Yeah. Some are to create, aren't they? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Well, they're actually all timed because 
when you think, well, yeah, because when you think of a sense of CERN, okay, let's just compare it to CERN like we did in the past. So the volcanoes are going to be part of these accelerators as far as the dump cycle. So CERN has to have a dump cycle while it's, after it's, you know, got all these particles and, and doing what they do where they smash into each other and create and, you know, <clears throat> we're relating this stuff to particle accelerators, but they have to have a dump cycle. So when I place some volcanoes, which not even nearly all, um, they fall on the outskirts of these different angels, these different accelerators. And they also fall right on the outskirts of um, known particle accelerators, which they're actually a ton more than we're aware of. You can look up particle accelerators and there's a massive list of, of known ones, not to mention here in the States, there's a whole lot of colleges that are teaching this, which they list them under known particle accelerators. So it kind of makes me wonder, did they build these universities over these things? to be able to teach specific students about this process. You know, it just a lot of questions rise when you get into that. Um, also, what it like the reason why MIT is so important, yet also laughed at in other supposed, like part, um, physics laughs at engineers, yet in fact, engineers are actually the ones that actually do anything. Well, right. Yeah, um, going, well, also, going, going back to the, you know, the what you're looking at there, the pyramid at the bottom. Now that would, to me, would suggest what you would call a left-hand rule on one of the accelerators. It's not pushing upwards. That one would be pushing downwards. A left-hand rule reversing the flow, in other words. So you can imagine we may come across a one similar that's got the pyramid at the top, which would mean an upward-directed uh, flow. So on a, on a world model, you know, looking around the world, if it was an upward one, you would see things like tornadoes involved. And, of course, on the downward floor, like that one shown there, the best reference I can think of would be a whirlpool. Yeah, that would make sense. It also, when you've said downward motion, reminded me of, like, deep earthquakes, too. How the pressure of these would go down. It'd be a very large process, and it would make the earthquake seem very very deep yeah and of course with the the nature of this technology at a certain point either above or below it you can have what's called an induction zone and that's what i think is creating all this lava at that particular point it's melting everything because there's such such a lot of heat generated in in the design of this technology it, it would make sense it's an induction zone it's, and it's just melting rock and everything around it yeah Tesla's death ray in it. <laughs> <laughs> the same compression. It's just it's just everything is the same, isn't it? It's just yeah. an expression of the same thing. So like when you realize halos and rainbows are just the visual representation of the electromagnetic everything that is going around on around us. And then you start to think. And then everything is that. Everything is linked. Everything is the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just code in more parts of the same, isn't it? It's it's the same over and over. It's just if, what we're looking at is different cultures' uh, depictions of how they would, you know, translate it into their native language from the times. As well as deliberately seg sorry, FPV. As well as de um, deliver deliberately segregating them all. Yeah, yeah. Dividing rule. <laughs> as well. As us mopping up the uh, breadcrumbs. Yeah, I mean, it gets it does get easier to see for us, doesn't it? And hopefully, anyone that watch our videos, you know, they can start looking at the bigger picture we're seeing. You know, it's obvious. It's obvious to us. The it's going to be slow for people to catch on to a lot of these decodings and research we we do, but it's down to their particular fields of interest and knowledge, really. You know, but the the good thing with this is we're cross reference in all kinds and putting it into its proper context again, where it where it belongs. Back to you one anyway. 
<laughs> we're sidetracking that a bit. Yeah, no worries. Um, okay, so the next one is Marchosius. Um, this one's a Marquise and commands over 33 legions. This one is very strong and an excellent fighter. Um, also very reliable. Gives true answers to all questions. Marchosius. Hoped after 1,200 years to return to heaven with the non-fallen angels. This one is depicted as a wolf with a man's form, as well as has griffin wings and a serpent's tail. Wow, what a lovely description. Yeah. And what a pretty sigil. They're just powerful and reliable, you know, and it's, and what was the sentence that answers all questions? You know, obviously it's very well designed, uh, a stable build. That's what it's telling you there straight away. This is, you know, it's powerful, it's reliable, it's stable, and it's fully functional. <laughs> That's for sure. A, con a control panel or a circuit board, a junction of some sort. Just look how beautiful it looks. It's symmetrical. There's loads. Yeah, of you know, there. the symmetry suggests balance, doesn't it? It's bringing balance. You know, it's balancing things out. It's telling me. You get any, for, any more info you want to put in that, Ros? Yeah, Wolf is associated with the moon as well. A lot of creation stories, especially in uh, First Blood, uh, First Nations of America, of the Americas, of, um, associate um, Wolf. So, also, wasn't there... Um... That suggests you know, it probably, possibly plays a role in helping guide uh, the, our, our moon. Yeah, like it does seem to be like a well. I I think it. I'm trying to I'm trying to make them into real things and try to separate them into the processes as physical, uh, mechanical, tangible things as well. So for this one, definitely control panel or something of the ilk for me. It suggests that it's a two-way amplifier as well. Ooh. <laughs> right, do you want to move to the 41? Yeah. Yeah. So Stolas is number 41. Um, this one is a great prince and commands over 26 legions. This one is known for astronomy and knowledge of poisonous plants, herbs, and precious stones. This one is depicted as an ether being, a crowned owl with long legs, a raven. Any more on that one? No. Could you just say the beginning a bit again, one, if you could? Yes. <clears throat> a great prince commands over 26 legions, teaches astronomy and the knowledge of poisonous plants, herbs, and precious stones. This one is depicted as an ether being a crowned owl, long legs, a raven. I love the description where it adds, you know, the ether and nature, because clearly, you know, they, these 
technologies are having a, a direct effect on everything around us, including nature. You know, they're part of nature's processes themselves. But yeah, interesting with the ether and plants. So it's you know, it's suggesting it's got a lot to do with what we would call outside nature, isn't it? Yes, because it's saying negatively poison plants and and uh, herbs and crystals, gems. So it's a negative process. This one also reminded me of that Nazca line with the bird that has the really long offset legs. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. That's what it reminded me of. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. When it mentions birds into these, you've got to, you know, start factoring in frequencies there, you know, looking at frequencies in use. So, uh, you know, like a ground species would be like a medium frequency, high frequency, and above would be bird type creatures. And of course, uh, the deeper frequencies would be like sea life and things down below. Yeah, very interesting. Lovely. Mm. And every one of them we look at does look very schematic, doesn't it? <laughs> you can't hide that anymore. No. Because we, because already within APM, we know through the hieroglyphs that most things that are attributed to birds mean frequency. So the fact that it's a crowned owl raven creature with long legs is a long wave frequency, FM rather than AM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're going into the you know the extreme high frequencies, like um, 5G. You know those kind of frequencies up there, up there and higher. The gigahertz. Yeah, this one is also going to be portrayed as an inductor, um, as well as those the way the circles are there at the north part of it, heading towards the east. That is going to kind of portray that it has some kind of a switching going on because of the way the circle is lined and then up and then another circle that is kind of a switch when you're looking at electrical schematics an important reference there as well you know what i just mentioned there but 5g we know it's harmful we know they're tr dropping plants down to get it put in you know trees and such because i do think this technology is going to damage and destroy them and that's the reference it gives there about nature and poisoning plants is exactly that same process. It's because of the frequencies in use, it can be harmful to certain parts of nature, which we already know 5G is following that same line of thinking, isn't it? Um, also, I want to mention here that in chat, Jim Bo said crowned owl Lilith. So he's related it to Lilith as well. Marvellous. Thank you. Lovely, a nice reference. Yeah, so definitely related there. Yeah, Lilith. <laughs> the yeah, magnets. We're we'll, we'll back yeah. to the magnetics again, aren't we? Yep, yep, we are. And she was a strong one. She tried to overpower Adam. Yep. And she wasn't destroyed. She ended up with a very important job, it seems. Important indeed, yeah. <laughs> okay, so next is uh, Phoenix. Phoenix is a Marquise who has 20 legions under his command. Um, this one is known for all wonderful science sciences and is an excellent poet and very obedient. Phoenix had hoped to return to heaven after 1,200 years. Um, this one is depicted as a phoenix, which sings sweet notes. And before I fi finish this one, the singing is also a frequency. You know, music is a part of the, the octave. So we're still talking about different um, notes of the octave, which the octave is part of you know, the infinity. Um, yeah. 
this one must warn his companions because he must not be alone, it says. Um, <laughs> let's see. <clears throat> Also, it says that he stands still before the conjurer. Nice wording and information. I would like that was the return to heaven, you know, so it's telling you right there, it's not a projecting luminary. It's um, obviously got some other type of role, but it wants to return to heaven. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a, you know, that's telling me it, it, it can either project, but it's been disabled from doing so for whatever reason. And it's still, so, you know, it's not one of the traveling uh, types of technology that, you know, you would associate with the sun's projector, say, the, the sun vehicle. So, yeah, very interesting. This is a stationary one. It's got a nice role to play, and it seems to be another reliable type technology, doesn't it? Riddle me this, how many of the luminaries have a three-day stationary um, thing that happen, apart from the sun and the moon? Because the moon has a three-day disappearing thing every month, and then it has a three-day full thing every month, and then our sun likes to like just stay in the same position for three days in particular times of the year. What other luminaries do that or is this one of the reasons why you asked me about constellations earlier one because the reason why i went ooh was because he doesn't like to be alone what if he's a leading loom a uh, 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 a leading luminary in a constellation i'll just answer the bit about the sun being stationary for three days now, what, the only time that can appear is when it's at the top of the gates, um, for instance, uh, 5R, 5F, 6, 5R, 6R and 6F in the north and the three in the, the bottom of the south. Because from, say, New Zealand's perspective bubble, it would appear to be in the same location over the course of about three months. So I think that I think that's where that's coming from. You know, it's not it's not actually standing still. It just appears to come from the same direction or it appears in the same location over three months and because it's because of the design of the gates if you, if you look at the seasons video you'll see what i mean perfectly it'll happen in the north and it'll happen in the south and it'll always will happen because it's the it's the cycle of the gates so that's where that's where that's coming from but yeah you know interesting if you you can plot other luminaries using the method i used in the seasons video you can get time and dates information for you know like new zealand's perspective bubble and see if any others, uh, you know, appear using the compass and time and dates information, and it will show you if any others appear to to, to what they say stand still. I would I wouldn't be surprised if some if more of them do it. Hope that helps. That's exactly what I was pertaining to FPV. Exactly. Yeah, I don't have an answer to that because I don't study enough of astrology. I'm sure some people do, and I'm sure they might have an answer. But yeah, just so people know what we had discussed before the stream was I asked Rose, do is there any point that these constellations would cross over each other and the reason i asked her that was because a lot of these are described as animals but only half of it with maybe another half with it and i asked her that because just an example would be the lion with a serpent tail reminds me it reminded me of say leo with part of another constellation over it especially if they were on different layers and crossing across each other and up in this you know the stars we may see part of leo but then we would see the back half of the serpent say where they'd kind of be blended and mixed but i personally don't study enough astrology to have the answer to that so 
on the APM model, uh, you know, what's that? What you just uh, described there, one, the way it would happen in the APM model would be the star halos, which again, you know, it's somewhat we haven't timed ourselves. We don't exactly know how many there is doing it. But it's a case of, you know, if some are traveling faster than others, you know, revolving quicker than others or slower, you will get different kind of constellations appearing. And obviously in the south, it's going to be mirrored and reversed. But yeah, you know, it, it, I would not expect to see, well, I would expect to see actually some overlaps if they are revolving at different speeds. That's something we don't know yet, because like one said, we're, we don't know enough about astrology. I know some. I know. Yeah, as in, I'm, I'm, I meant to. Does I'm, that make sense? No, 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 FPV. I mean, in the most greatest respect, it is a profession that requires years and years and years and years of study. I have studied it alongside an awful lot of other things in my life. So I have a general understanding in some things. I have a, quite a deep understanding, but I am still no astrologer. Yeah, well, you've obviously looked into it more than one and myself, you know, Rosie. So you, you know, you, you're ahead of us on that on that um, field for sure. You know, you, you cross referencing things easy that I've never, you know, looked into, but, which is a good thing. You know, it helps more and more because more of the picture gets added, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm just re evaluating my realm with APM eyes as opposed to any eyes that I've previously owned. And you're doing a fantastic job. <laughs> Keep it up. Yes, very much. Um, also, this one, just to throw it out there, is a fallen angel as well. Of course it is. Yeah, so, <laughs> so again, more references from other scriptures and cultures. Almost looks like a building as well. You know? Yeah, the sh the shapes to me on some of them, you know, I would I would not be surprised if that's what the sarcophagi actually looks like. You know, you might be looking at a side view with it or a top down view of the building that contains various pieces of technology. I thought that a few times, Rose. You look at these shapes, you know, you can see where when you look at these shapes, you can see where castle shapes and other things have been designed from, can't you? You know, uh, geometry mm -hmm. is just jumping out the geometry. Yes, I agree. They do look like castles. The, um, you know, the top. We talked about that one day. I can't remember what I read. I take in a lot of information every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just jumps yeah. back at you, doesn't it? You know, you look at things, uh, reference them, put them in the back of your mind, and then one day it'll pop up again. Um, this next one is Halfus. Okay, so I, I don't really, I couldn't really find any information on this one. But when you think of terms of electrical schematics, this, this particular shape is going to be known as a chopper. So anyone that really understands electricity and how this works, it's a chopper signal. It's also a square, so that's telling me that's some kind of a timed timing system. When you said uh, chopper there, I was instantly reminded of the main one, the, the razor room. You remember that one from the main? Uh -huh. The razor room, the chopper. <laughs> yeah, what's, you know, what's going on in there? What's getting chopped in there? I wonder. Yeah. But yeah, you know, look at the, look at the shape of it. Yeah. Another design that just kind of jumps out geometry wise. Yeah, and it's a magnet and it's got those strange round things that are usually attached to the circuit, just floating about in the middle. Those, are, those circles all represent different kinds of switches. And um, because of the way those are laid out with the just right across from each other, those are open switches. We also so have to remember in the NASCA line. Sorry, one. Carry on. No, I was just finishing that it's an open circuit. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, remembering from the NASCA lines, there's also lots of different antennas in use in the NASCA lines, and antennas will be factored into this either as, either as in receiving or transmitting antennas. 
because you know they're obviously monitoring and it's timed events and triggers mechanisms going on and that little thing that looks like the speaker on the bottom left you know that right it reminds me of a dish you know an antenna when i looked at it then and considered antennas and it's the same with the the ones that you you know you see with the bone arrow depictions that could be you know sending a signal in that direction or receiving a signal from that direction depending what's what's in the archer's hand i suppose so yeah, you know, just a little bit more cross reference in that. Yeah, nothing more to add really. We may need to start uh, when we revisit this later on, if we ever get time. <laughs> when we go into the entomology of uh, the names and things, um, I think that's when something might be revealed. Okay, so Malthus is the next one. Um, Malthus is an earl commanding 26 legions. This one is said to have a rough voice. So that's kind of telling me it might be a much lower frequency. This one is also depicted in the shape of a stork. This one builds towers and fills them with ammunition. It's an armor of sorts. Also known as a prince. Um, said to send his legions into a battle. Or to places designed by higher command also known as a president and in that aspect he's a major wow doesn't that doesn't it give them amazing descriptions <laughs> the roles that they play and what they're in charge of and processing and passing it onwards yeah very interesting i'd like to ask some of that first bit again when i was going to something on the first bit uh, i should have wrote it down but can you can you reread it again yes um as an earl, this one commands over 26 legions, and this one is depicted with a rough voice. So um, that to me says a much lower frequency. And this one is depicted in the shape of a stork, and he builds towers and fills them with ammunition. This, was an, this one is an armor. This one's also yeah, known as... That was the part one, yes. That's a bit okay. exactly what I wanted there. An armor. Yeah, so it, yeah. The, well, all of that part there, yeah. The voice, yeah, you were right. I was thinking, you know, the, the bird, the deep voice, it's a deep frequency. Now, the tower and ammunition, um, obviously, you know, I think when I, when, when it mentions towers, straight, you know, I'm thinking of vortex, um, the vortex kind of, you know, like a tornado and what you what it's thrown into there is what you would call ammunition you know it's light particles getting spun around so that's the ammunition you know that's the armor <laughs> you know when you think of armor you think in the first thing you think of is like breastplates and like a knight's armor but when you think about it it's an armory it's it's filling these vortexes with very useful light particles that um will be passed on to those that need them by by the description yeah, so you know what what it could what it's telling me is it could be one of the ones that actually helps generate wind and things like that. Dare I say it's in Asia? <laughs> this also, because of the the actual sigil itself, um, one in a in an electrical schematic layout, it is known as a heat source, and two, it's a switching because of the way the two triangles are there in the center. But also, that reminds me of the compression, where the two become one. Yeah, the narrowing, yeah. Yes. Would somewhere like China fit on our grid? Japan, that, well, yeah. because stork is a very strong mythical symbol that comes through in that part of the world more 
than elsewhere. Yeah, that's uh, and, definitely located at that side of the world, isn't it? And also, the mythology is associated with industry, armour, etc., 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 towers, it, you know, the Great Wall of China. We know yeah. that it's not just to, to keep the Mongols out maybe it was the mongols built it to keep the chinese out who knows or it was whatever it was actually intended to be created for but for me this really which reinforces again what everybody else has said but we know birds are a frequency i agree with one a rough voice is describing lower you said things about tornadoes and things and then i'm still like but for me, it's a place more east as opposed to west. Oh, yeah, you're going to get them east-west, you know, depend on the, the power of the flow, really. The faster they spin up, the quicker or larger the tornado could be. You know, I'm not saying they all create tornadoes. Some of them might be just rotating mildly, but, you know, it's that rotation, the, 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 the slow-moving uh, vortex. That's all it needs is to... to create what they're calling ammunition you know it's all it's doing is it's moving light particles around that's that other processes are going to use yeah yeah okay, it's just so my... real real fast oh. sorry jimbo caught my attention in the chat because he's in the chat and he is very uh, proficient when it comes to like electricity and and all this stuff but he said it looks like old tv tubes tetrodes he says that he could wire these things. They're follower circuits. The arrowhead points to inflows. They're all directional. Yeah. Hello, Jimbo. Good to see you again, mate. And yeah, Jimbo uh, ch ch jumps in with the relative and interesting information. Yeah. He said an induction coil or radiation emitting. I knew he would get this because <laughs> he knows a lot about this stuff. Jimbo is brilliant. He taught me a whole lot of things when we were all starting this yeah for me excellent because it just reinforces stuff i owe anything i know about any of this stuff is through audio because my father was a telecommunications engineer right from a man and boy when it was analog right up into modern day so he used to bore me to death with stuff that I never realised I actually needed to know. So the only that's the only reason why I have any understanding of this stuff. I have no idea about names and things. I just can see how it works and the matched patterns. So that's brilliant that he's here because I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but it's I don't know anything else apart from just general understanding. Yeah, excellent stuff. I'm glad Jim was in the chat because now he's uh, jumping in with other information. He's saying the second one's uh, a rectifier, full wave rectifier. Fantastic, Jim. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the kind of people you need. You know, we can give give these so many decodings, but you need the electricians and electromechanics out there to you know look at it and realize what they're looking at. Like Jimbo is. Jimbo's seen it exactly for what it is. The circuitry it's uh, describing. Fantastic, Jim. And an, uh, as an addendum from Rudy Marley Askett, analog for the bits between one and zero. Lovely information, guys. Yeah, you're seeing it. Yep, I'm glad everybody's kind of jumping in with information as well. <clears throat> I am not. Um, my dad was an electrician, but he basically told me <laughs> it's very dangerous. Call me. <laughs> so <laughs> this is all new for me to learn. <laughs> Uh, right, should we, do you want to jump to the next, which one are we on here? Uh, yeah, we've done the last one, didn't we? So we're on 45, yeah? Yeah, number 45. Oh, by the way, the last one is also a fallen angel. The one we just spoke about. Um, next, oh, look at that one. That one's cool. Um, next is Rom. Again, another fallen angel. 
um, Rom is a great Earl, also a thief. And he comes from the King's house. And carries it wherever he's assigned. He destroys cities and has great despite unto dignities. He knows things past and present. Which that's interesting because a lot of them say future too. And that one doesn't say the future. It just knows past and present. I would say it's some kind of a recorder. Um, he is of the order of thrones and has 30 legions. This one is depicted as a crow. Again, Ram is a thief. That's all I have on that one. Yeah, when I first looked at that one there, it reminded me of the of a vehicle. When you look at the vehicle, you I think uh, you know in scriptures it mentions a procession coming out with the sun, and to me that means that suggests there's more than one you know vehicle type projector moving along with them. So it could be you know a, a, another piece of technology that comes out with the rest. Uh, so you know it's suggesting the bits a moving one; it can move around. Um, Jimbo's moving ahead a bit, but he's calling the next one a yoke coil. And no, it's is the, really, really this yeah. one is, yeah. So, yeah, the, fourth, the, the yolk was the fourth one on the other picture, I think. Oh, okay. So this one would be a relay switch. Um, but the, if you're going to shout them out in chat, Jim, for us to add, uh, just put the number, mate, which one you mean. Because we're, we're, you know, we're like decoding them numerically, so we're at, where we're at 45 now. So, you know, 45 onwards, if you see any that reminds you anything, just put the number in the chat, mate, and shout it out, and we'll make sure it gets read out for you. Um, also, looking at the schematics again, I'm learning this stuff, but... Um, So these switches seem to be, because of the way they're laid out, and Jimbo can correct me if I'm wrong, because he obviously knows a whole lot more about this than I do, but these would be like shielded wires. Um, shielded wires and cables as well. Yeah. Yeah, it looks that way, isn't it? Designed in, inside a shell or and some kind. Diamond shape is a proximity sensor. See that diamond shape? So it's going to sense when things get close to it. As I mean, yeah, and of course, you know, the shape of the sarcophagi that this technology would be sealed in. The 144,000. <laughs> this is number 45, say, of 144,000 different sarcophagi that's got technologies contained therein. And the shape of it, if we were to turn it the other way with the A facing north, it almost reminds me of the scarab beetle shape. Yeah, I thought that as well. That's why, you know, that's why I mentioned some projector. Anything from you, Rose? Yeah, actually quite a lot. Um, so uh, the song that I get in my head for this sigil is sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. To me, it is... Um, I think this might be something to do with our halos. Because even the name Ram is very similar to um, some teachings uh, 
uh, masonically to do with uh, roll arc manor as where they specifically um, remember Noah and that's all about rainbows and things. So with everything taken into consideration that was just being said, um, I think it might actually have something to do with what we've all been seeing. So I'm a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's least <it's> unrelated, isn't it? <laughs> I got that as soon as I looked at it. You know, you're looking at a type of vehicle, either a top-down view or a side profile of what I, thought I consider to be a vehicle that contains technology that's moving around inside this vehicle. And I, it yeah. does mention the, the other sun in the description. Yeah, it's definitely and part again, of the, and, and of course, in the name, you've got Ra in the name. Yeah, which was what I was just about to say again, which is Ra, the solar boat, and what brought us all here in the beginning at 12 gates and da 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 <laughs> It's just, wow. It's just all the way through that, I was just like, this is, this is either a node or the halo and then i really i was i didn't really look at the sigil first i was just literally writing notes as one was speaking and then i looked up halfway through and like giggled and then was pleased that i was on mute and then i just had that song from guys and dolls musical in my head sit down you're rocking the boat and then there we go i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fantastic stuff. Right back to you, one. We'll move to the next one. I think Jimbo's put a description for the next one in the chat there. Okay. Um, what number are we on? We're on 46 now. 46. Okay. That's what I thought. I just want to make sure. Um, let me get back to my notes. Okay, so Focalar, which I kind of like that name. Um, it makes me think of the eye focusing. Anyway, um, this one is a duke, a very powerful duke. Commands three, three or 30 legions. Um, this one is a fallen angel. It's also one of the lesser keys of Solomon. Um, it appears in the form of a man with griffin wings. This one is known to kill and drown. This one overthrows warships. This one has power over wind and sea and did hope to return to heaven after 1,000 years. This one is one of three what they call archdemons. This one has an intellectual relationship. Um, yeah, that's all I have on that one. I love the uh, sea references there. <laughs> Straight away, I'm thinking whirlpool, <laughs> the command over the seas and the winds. Okay, yeah, it's fantastic again. So you're looking at you know another accelerator, aren't you? It's not a projector. It hopes to return to being a projector one day, but currently it's doing some other kind of role. So let's also read what Jimbo has here. Um, control gate. Jerry said a magnetic coil inducing current. And releases the current when drops, which I think that's really cool because, you know, in the water we have current and in electricity we have current. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one on the same. <laughs> um, I'm going to mute and go potty real fast, but you guys can talk about this one. Okay, there's, um. An archdemon is a lesser key of Solomon.
So, um, from an anonymous grimoire apparently found in the 17th century, lists 72 of the most powerful and prominent demons of hell in its first part of Ars Gotia, which is A R S, separate word G O E T I A. Satan himself is not mentioned among them, considering his overall dominion of hell, allegedly, as the prince of darkness. Below him, the Ars Gotaria suggests that there are four kings of the far cardinal directions who have power over the 72, next to the kings and onward with other demons with lower moronic titles the four kings of the cardinal directions are the primary point of contention between different editions and translations and occultist writers the most common composition of the kings are now guess what in case you hadn't already guessed guys and girls it's going to be north south east and west king of the east amiaon a m a y m o n King of the West, Corson, C O R S O N. King of the North, Ziminar, Z I M I N I A R. King of the South, G A A P. Then there proceeds to be several others after that, which is King Bal, B A E L, and quite a lot of people may be. Um, Familiar with that one. And then you have King Piamon, P A I M O N, King Beleth, B E L E T H, King Person, P U R S O N. And I do believe we covered that sigil in the first um, of the part one of these. Then we have King Asmodei. A S M O D E Y, King Fine, B I N E, with a little thing above the E, King Balam, B A L A M, King Zagan, Z A G A N, and King Bilal, B E L I A L. And that's just a quick search. And I'm trouted. <laughs> Happens every day, <laughs> just about, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, excellent cross-referencing, Rose. Lovely information, that. Another thing, well, I remember, you know, the arch demon it immediately reminded me of the rainbow. You know, the arch, we've seen an arc. Now, going back to rainbows, what we want you guys to do, you know, if anyone's out there time-lapsing or recording rainbows, we would like you to time-lapse them because you're going to find some stationary and some actually revolve. They revolve on the, you know, in a, in a certain spot, and they never change. And what we're going to show in our next video is how these are actually part of the workings of the realm, how they factor in, and what's moving and why. You're going to see a bit more of that in one of our next videos. But yeah, you know, uh, research-wise, definitely time-lapse rainbows. You might get a nice surprise because they do look amazing when you see them in time-lapse moving. And they are definitely revolving either clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, Jimbo said water gates. Sorry, I'm back, but he said water gates. Question, question, question. So, yeah, water gates. Interesting, you know. We we get the we get the gates of water, and then we get rainbows. <laughs> Good connection that when you think about it. All good. It's like even the connection with arch demons through um, unusually Zoyarism, which is a obscure little religion. So I need to. That's that's another thing. That's a new rabbit hole. I need to now go down. Thank you very much. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Anything else on this one? No, it's me finished on 46 one. Okay. So 47 and 48 are both Vipar, Vipar. And we've seen this before 
where there are two with the same name. However, their sigils are different, slight differences. Um, last time we said this could possibly be in two different areas, if I remember correctly, um, on opposite sides, perhaps. So Vipar is a strong, great duke rules over 29 legions he governs the waters and guides armored ships laden with ammunitions if requested he can make the sea rough and stormy and appear in full to ships vepar can make men die in three days Um, uh, Vepar has been depicted as a mermaid is that the uh, one yeah yeah that's what yeah lovely descriptions huh yeah, and look you look at the sigils again, you know, you look at, you're looking at switching, it could be you know, it suggests to me it's capable of switching and going by the description it can, you know, switch modes, or let's say switch modes on demand. You know, if it needs storms, it can help generate a storm. Of course, uh, being being below the water it seems because it's got control in the, in the waters. It's a guardian of, of others, so it's helping um I would call a guardian in this situation, you know, imagine, you know, the sun projector coming towards it uh, in the underworld and this has now got to supply more fuel for it to keep it going and it's got its own process to do. That's exactly what it was, uh, give, you know, showing me there. It's uh, related in the process to keep things moving, going east to west and also being able to repeat, uh, uh, sorry, to uh, appear to sailors. Um, obviously, you're going to see a water phenomenon mm -hmm. such as either a whirlpool or a water spout. Depending if it's depending if it's left hand or right hand rule. For me, I agree entirely. Astrologically, and all mariners travel along the realm astrologically. It doesn't matter if they have an astrolabe or GPS; it's still the same thing. Oh yeah, well I remember. Well I remember. If you look at the two images, you've got the crosses on the right raised a lot higher than the one on the left. So, you know, that there would probably suggest to me that would what would create a water spout. It's pushing through the ground. That's, imagine that snake going through the center. The line through the center is the equator. Now, that, that, swig, that snake shape appearance would be the ground plane being stretched by the projections. So that would create, you know, your water spout. It's, it's putting a bump in the ether, basically, a few bumps in the ether. And the opposite one would obviously be in a, in a reverse type role. You know what I see here, um, Jimbo said an aquifer control. What I see is in the first one, see how everything is real shut in and closed inward. And in the second one, it seems like it's opened up. That's what that's telling me is whatever this is, it can shut down and it can open up for the storms and the, and the crazy chaos in the waters. Yeah, makes sense. Isn't it? It's uh, capable of switching roles, and the one on the right is obviously the one that I would imagine would create the storms. It's it's thrusting upwards electromagnetic fields. Yeah, yeah, and that's why it dies for three days. As a, it, we have stationary for three days, like when we do have our luminaries, like I previously said, stationary or whatever. This is actually die for three days. Mm. So that is a definite process, isn't it, of an off? Oh, yeah, definitely off, yeah. Shut down for three days and come back. Well, that, you know, that, that suggests that it could be related to the moon then, doesn't it? Possibly, because mermaids is female energy. Female energy is associated with the moon. Mermaids aren't like sirens where they are uh, making sailors go off course. They're more of a... Um, distraction but at the same time they know that they're going to be there there's a whole tradition about the underworld in just the watery realm 
before we even get to the mechanics. And that also could make sense how science relates the moon cycle with the water, the, the flow, the tides. You know? Yeah. If it's shutting down and opening up and shutting down and opening up, that in a sense would absolutely make tides. Oh, yeah. yeah, go that's go good, out and the, come back in, and go out and come back that's in. The, be... That's the visible phenomenon that you mentioned. That the you know it can appear to sailors. Yeah, it's the it's got to do with tides, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, that one's <laughs> fantastic. The tides. Yeah, <laughs> it relates to the tides. How cool is that? So oh, people, yeah. when you're talking about the tides, make sure you mention uh, VPAR. That was the one, right? Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. But look, that that just and the coil. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's creating waves. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It's, it's it creates waves. Look at it. <sighs> Nothing to do with gravity, peeps. Nothing. No, no. The waves we're talking about is the ground planes waves being stretched by these max three magnets you got elevated above them. That's what's stretching the electromagnetic data upwards, which is what was their series recorded on the on the maps on the overlays he showed us. We'll, we'll show them there. I'll, I'll, add a, I'll add an overlay to that sometime. But, but you know the ones I mean, the magnetic data. You can see it's stretching it up. Yeah, because it's everything is contraction and expansion and just an expression of the same thing. This is what we've got to start to remember. This is why the APM works, because the everything just fits into the grid, where everything else is just hanging questions or hypothesis is high as you know, hypothesis. One day I'll get my teeth fixed. But you know, <laughs> it's just isn't it? It's just one of the reasons why we know that this is more likely to be what our realm looks like than any other version that is presented to us. It's because no matter what we do, no matter what discipline we research it fits and it's just an expression of the same thing again and again because everything is just a compression and expansion it really is and if you look at the wave you know you've got a sine wave there what it's what it's showing you that it's manipulating the wave into like a sine wave perfect manip manip manipulating waves that's exactly what it's doing Awesome stuff, guys. Sine waves, you know. There's your waves, there's your troughs. That's your electrical terminology right there. Back over to you, one. One must be busy. <laughs> Let's chat on Rose till one gets back. Well, what would you like to chat about? There's an awful lot of stuff that we could talk about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, cool. very cool that though, isn't it? When you see two, it's okay. One, I'm here. We'll hand it, we'll hand it over to you. Okay. Um, I'm trying to also get. Are we, finished on, are we finished on thought yet? Because I'll get to the next ones if we are. Yes. So next is 49. Yeah. Let's move forward. 49 is Sabnock. Um, so Sabnock is a Marquise. Um, a great and mighty Marquise who reigns over 50 legions. Uh, Sabnock builds very high towers and furnishes them with weapons and ammunition. Sabnock is depicted as a soldier with armor the head of a lion riding a pale horse. There's your scriptural pale horse rider. 
How cool is that? Yeah. I think in the last one we did of these, um, there were other horses, weren't there mentioned? But yeah, yeah. this one's... Yeah, I think there was only two out of all of the, the first half of horses. Again, with this one, you know, we're looking at tower ammunition. It's supplying the energies required for others to work isn't it it's a it's a workhorse part, part of the workhorse team that's what it's looking at to me but pale could suggest um weak it, the, the horse reference when you look in the image there is actually what looks like a stirrup you see it yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely if it was flipped upside down it would you could literally put your foot in it but what's that lad is that ladder thingy anything to do with modern day electrical stuff four pillows pillars but i'm not sure if that's what oh four the... pillars is interesting What do you mean, Jimbo? 52 has four boxes. We're only on 49. Uh, yeah, we're on 49. <laughs> There's anything for 49? <laughs> <laughs> I need to go farther up. 45 spells Maru. Are we on 45 yet? No. The ladder that though we depicted in the past as the, the uh, energy does like a climbing it could be the ascension of the luminaries right could be our, our increase in power increasing power it could be taken either way um, yeah especially if you re remember what i was explaining earlier how um regardless of where you are on the plane northern or southern heaven sphere the constellations only tilt in one direction or the, the other by um, a short amount of degrees, but overall they are going anti clockwise. So you're always going to sit. Does that make sense? So it, I don't know. I'm a yeah, we can, you know, we can wander off a bit, and <laughs> that's what happens, isn't it? You know, it, can it be? Can it, can, it, can it do this? Can it do that? Yeah, you know, there's no harm in it. You know, you know, I'm in a bit of speculation and um, trying to figure out exactly what you know what this process is doing. You know, we we may never get all of them or understand all of them in the in the real way they need understood, but you know, we have to show the references and cross -re cross references, and it's all this like we keep saying, it's all the same thing, just different depictions. Agreed. And people also need to understand that all three of us have may have independently researched this as well as bringing our own expertise and knowledge. But this is our first conversation. People are hearing what we would normally do in private before we create a video. And I think yeah. that's important, too, because this is quite private for us, really, isn't it? you know not only, not only that rose you know we haven't you know we haven't rehearsed this or anything this is us actually doing it live which is something we don't really do a lot of because you know the, the the main reason being it can take hours and hours but you know a subject like this i don't really mind anymore if it takes four hours it takes four hours we've just got to you know get our get our heads together all put our inf information and in, and in pieces in and you start seeing the bigger picture for me it's all it's always relating to the same thing for and what the people are seeing here is you know views and information from three different people's aspects of research they've looked into themselves yeah and this is truly about having several different time zones different um levels of obligation to life the universe and everything and our need to do this because it's necessary Yes, we've got to put everything back into its original context and then we see the construct, you know, put the construct back where it belongs. And this is the construct coming back together. 
Okay, so the next one is Shacks. Um, Shacks is number 50. Um, Shacks is a great Marquise and has power over 30 legions. And these ride evil horses. He can take away the sight and hearing and understanding. Shax is known as a thief. He has stolen money out of the king's houses. Also steals horses. Shax can discover hidden things if they are not kept. Um, Shax should not be bothered very often. He's known as obedient. Um, also, Shax is affiliated with a magic triangle. He, is, he speaks with a hoarse voice, but his voice can change into a beautiful one when he enters the triangle. Wow. Interesting word, isn't it? Very, very interesting. Uh, evil. You know, wow. we can look at the word. We can look at the word evil now because, you know, going by the what you're saying there, you know, you can relate evil now actually meaning more something like harmful. It can cause harm, you know, due to certain frequencies, for instance. Uh, it goes into obedience there, so it's obviously runs and it's you know it's obviously another reliable type technologies. But the, the interesting with the triangle as well and the voices. So it's telling you, you know, that it can switch to a higher note. So, so yeah, very cool stuff. Uh, it just falls, you know, it's just more of the same again, isn't it? Yeah, and we can see that depicted in the photo. See that how in the slender part of that, you know, the switches are open wide, but they come up into the point as they enter the larger part of that um, sigil. So that could, you know, that could be where it switches from being two separates into one. Um, that could be where the it's entering the triangle for the the change of the frequency, which it would, because yeah. that would be when two frequencies become one. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, you can also look at it now when you're know, getting. I think there's one, two, three, four, five. Six, six on the right, and then it goes down to it looks like five or six again, and it narrows down to one. I mean, what Jimbo said in chat: fifty looks like a CRT, a cathode ray tube. You know, that's what Jimbo's impression straight away of the Nazca lines was. You know, when we were decoding the Nazca lines, he said it's kind of behaving like a CRT monitor. It's projecting into the heavens, which is you know that falls exactly in line with what we're, what we're saying. The, the sun projector is a projected image from below, an electromagnetic projection. And this is how CRT monitors behave. It's just completely, it's one of those um, diverse processes again that can do more than one function without needing a separate order, which is what I think when we have the same name is, it's a separate order, but for a slightly different process that happens simultaneously. This is something that is self-contained. Again, I hate to look at the shape, but you know, it's, it's self-contained. You've got your magnet to the south, but to the west, everything is on, but connected this time. And I have to admit, the, the, the symbol inside where the uh, one told us that the floating uh, circle is an on as opposed to an attached to the circuit, which is off, those are the hands of, that, that is an actual Egyptian hieroglyph where it's just the two hands pointing up. Yeah, I see what you mean, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you're gonna. I think you're gonna see that. You know, obviously that jumped out to you straight away. Was the hieroglyph uh, connection? I've seen a couple that reminded me of that, but yeah, I should have mentioned them as well. But yeah, well reminded. <laughs> we need to keep cross referencing. So yeah, spot on. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, there's just so much to look at, isn't there? And <laughs> tie it all back in. I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> um, so the next one, then we'll move along, is Vine. Um, by Vinny. It's Vinny, sorry. Uh, Vinny is known as a king or a count, also an earl. It's also depicted as a male and female, king and queen, commanded by Satan. Vinny creates storms and makes the waters rough by means of these storms. It can bring down walls and build towers. This is portrayed as a lion holding a snake, riding a black horse. In etymology, their name seems to be stemming from the Latin word vinia, which also is the name given to an ancient war machine made of wood and covered with lever leather and branches. It's used to overthrow walls. Um, Vinny commands 36 legions. He knows of the past, present, and future. Can discover hidden things. Um, Yeah, that's what I have on that one. That's really brilliant, but I was unfortunately interrupted. May I ask you very kindly, could you repeat that? Yes. I'm very sorry. That's okay. Uh, Vinny, Vinny is a king, count, and earl. It's also depicted as male and female, a king and a queen, commanded by Satan. It's known for creating storms and making waters rough by means of these storms. This one can bring down walls and build towers. This one is portrayed as a lion holding a snake in their hand, riding a black horse. The etymology of this name seems to be stemming from the Latin word venia, which is also the name that was given to an ancient war machine made of wood and covered with leather and branches. Choose to overthrow walls. This one commands Fantastic. over. Oh, sorry. Sorry, go <laughs> it's okay. This one commands over. This one commands over 36 legions. Um, and is can tell present, past, and future, and also discovers hidden things. Wow, amazing that. You're obviously coding that as you're going along. Right, so... <laughs> <laughs> right, so it can... Uh, I've decoded quite a bit there. Right, it can be controlled by Satan. So obviously, you know, Satan being another piece of technology, it can switch it on and off. Now, these walls and pillars, it's, uh, it's mentioning here. Now, your walls in my decode would actually um, translate as a tsunami, and your towers would be the water spouts. Obviously, it's water related. Now, you know, you've got a left hand rule, right hand rule there, so it can, it can probably, um, well, it's saying it can switch. It can, you know, probably create whirlpools as well, depending on what Satan requires it to do. You know, nothing, nothing to be afraid of here, guys, with Satan. Satan is just a, a technology. Scripture tells you Satan runs the world, or words to that effect. And what you're looking at is Satan is another a big piece of technology that's got control over others. It's as simple as that. This is what we're looking at. That's uh, my input on it. Jimbo says, uh, Vinny is a square wave generator. <laughs> oh, how's that, guys? A square wave generator, just what we've been seeing at the Nazca lines. I'll pass over to you, Rose. Thank you very much. <laughs> what can a girl say? <laughs> um, you just 
I I love APM because it just keeps proving me I'm not crazy. I don't mind being crazy, but I am not. Um, this excites me in loads because of a little thing that um, sideways back chat a little while ago. I uh, again about stationary luminaries and things, and I went. Has anyone looked into Joshua? And you were like, yeah, one did uh, uh, glossed over something in one of our stuffs. And then I I genuinely can't remember what it is because I genuinely like one and everybody else that does any real research is constantly um, bombarded with stuff on a daily basis and we don't know really where we are. But I do remember that she did something specifically on uh, Joshua, his horn and the story thereof and what that related to our son. This is the story of Joshua. And then you look and it's a face and it is perfect. So horn is ram, ram. It looks like you. it could be a cow or a, a sheep's face. And that's yeah. what they use to create the sound. Yep. Awesome, awesome information, Rose. Yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? Where the, you know, where the shapes are coming from, where it's getting these shapes and depictions. I forgot to mention on the other one that, you know, we mentioned one before that had wings. We have to, you know, when, when it adds wings to these, they're obviously capable of projecting something into the sky. So I thought I'd better add that. Yeah, because it's all about just, especially because we've got the same magnet at the bottom, but it's in a, an enclosed arch. We know what that is. That's a projection. And then you've got all this other stuff, but it looks like still, it looks like a face, it, which could be either a ram or it doesn't matter if it's a sheep or a bull, they're both relevant because, again, it's in spring. Yeah. Electrically speaking, at the top of the design, you can see the waves there being pushed upwards in, and they're kind of square shaped, I suppose. But, you know, the square, square wave, it's, it's creating a square wave. And obviously, that's involved in creating these columns or tsunamis and other processes. Pretty cool when you, you know, when you relate to what's actually. That's relating to in nature, isn't it? You know, you can see you can see nature. Now you're looking at the cause of nature. This is what we're decoding, guys. These, these are the causes of most of most of nature's processes. Is, is technology one hundred percent? Yeah. Right back to you, Juan. Okay. Um, where are we at? 52? Bifron? Bifrons? Yep. yep, 52 next, yep. Okay. Um, let me find where I'm at here. We'll go quite a bit back. Hold on. Okay. So Bifron is a count and an earl, and he resides over 60 legions and teaches sciences and arts, also the virtue of the gems. The origin of the name is a Roman god, Janus. Um, he also teaches about woods and herbs and changes corpses from their original graves into other places, sometimes putting on magic lights that seem like candles. He can appear as a monster, but then changes his shape to a man. That's what I have on this one. This one is pretty crazy as far as the mm -hmm. sigil itself goes. Yeah. Um, I would but, say the sigil, what the sigil is showing as one is, um, you know, it could be the underworld at the bottom and that, that bit with all the, the, the squiggling and the little circles could be, you know, represent the ground. 
above and they could be the little gems because it does mention gems there and, and how it has an effect on minerals so it tells me it's you know it's involved in the process of forming minerals and such and it also seems to come with a, a visual phenomena which we can relate to ufos uh from the video you spoke about where you know some of these ufo sightings that people see lights you know this random flashing lights here and there it's like visual phenomena that you've uh, touched on before yeah Definitely. yeah i agree it is um, the way it's pointing down is under but it's still the way the sigil is is prominent and important so it's not a lesser function it is a great function that needs to be represented below the line of sight almost yeah um Bifrons is also associated with mathematical arts that I, what i see is yes the squares being in the underworld is the timing system of what's showing above it's showing the connection from the below to the above yeah, because it is a count. And yeah. um, I'm sorry, Sesame Street, but you know, you did teach you did teach me math. <laughs> and these <laughs> things are for a reason. <laughs> it's very it may I even say it looks like a spider. You it, can does look say insect that. Like, it does look insect like, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, what I find interesting with that one, you know, we're going to come across some some more like this because this one here being, um, you know, associated with the minerals and gems and such, there's going to be more and more of them because as you see on the birthstones, you know, every location in the world it differs. So what you're looking at there is different coloured ones because of the, what it's, uh, the, the, the elements it has to interact with in the creation processes of all these materials. So, you know, it makes sense. That's why we're getting different colors. There's different configurations on this oil type and such is different above it as well. So that's why we're getting different colors in the gems. I agree. Yeah, in this instance, I don't see a particular place, but I do see a creation of something. Yeah, there's creators, maintainers and destroyers. And, you know, that's definitely a creator type one right there. Should we move to the next? Yes. Um, so the next is going to be number 53, which is Vual. Again, we have two of the same here. Let me make sure. Yeah, so Vual has... 53 and 54 so we can talk about those together um vual is a great duke he resides over 37 legions tells the things of the past present and the things to come vual speaks the egyptian language um, he gives love and causes friendship the wall is depicted as a dromedary. And after that, changes shape into a man. The wall has a deep voice. Which that is very interesting. Um, the deep voice I would have associated with yeah a, a lower frequency but it's giving love and friendship which is to me a higher frequency um, love being the highest of all and is it dromedary would that be associated with the constant like a, a dromeda it could very well be andromeda yeah, or, or, or the camel reference may actually relate you know to, to heat it could be producing a lot, a lot of heat like you would possibly find under a desert well what i f feel like in a camel depiction is that um 
it would hold something too. Camels have two humps. They hold water that can last for days and days and days. Yeah. It's definitely and, the, and, and there is two there, isn't it? It's got two rolls. When you see the one on the right, it's the only difference really is the the magnet seems to have rotated around some. So yeah, um seems to be like guidance, doesn't it? When you look at that, it could be like switching and guiding. That's what I was about to say. It's definitely some kind of a time switching. Yeah. Um, the second one on the east side of it, the tube became much longer. So it tells me that the switching to that part from the left to the right one, it has moved up, you know, and, and same what you said, the magnet, it's done a shift. <clears throat> Yeah, the, 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 the top surface of each one, you know, that could represent a waveform. And you see how it's changed between one and the other. I'm not saying it's, you know, that's, I'm not saying that is the waveform or a waveform, but it, it looks like that kind of switching would cause a waveform change to me. Anything else to add to Vual? No, not for me, one. Anything from you, Rose? Um, no, not really. But it does intrigue me. Um, but maybe for a later date. Because it looks like what, like an Egyptian? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I'm yeah. curious, does it look like the constellation Andromeda at all? I don't know the constellation. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> it, I have a tickle, but I don't know what. You, you know when, you know, because this is literally now. So, but at the same time, it still just looks like the bangles, isn't it? Walk like an Egyptian. <laughs> I've got music references all over the place this evening. Lovely. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, the way they do their arms and such through the song and the video, yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to 55, which is Hagenti. Hagenti is a great president ruling over 33 legions. He can make wisdom and instruct people in every subject. Um, Hagenti transmutes all metals into gold and changes wine to water and water into wine. Um, Hagenti is depicted as a big bull with wings of a griffin. That's what I have on Hagenti. I like the uh, reference there with the metals. <laughs> yeah, you know, we've been talking about that, haven't we? About uh, how gold and silvers and various metals are formed. And we've related that before in the Power and Glory video of the star halos and, and shooting stars and such. Uh, yeah. The wing, obviously, another, another one that's got wings, so it's capable of projecting something into the sky. Now, it's, it doesn't have to always be a luminary. Because now we've got rainbows con to consider because, you know, it's the same again. These are a projection pushing upwards. So, you know, rainbows, anything in the heavens, whether it be rainbows or anything like uh, all the way up to stars, you have to consider all these as projections and all this technology is, you know, either projecting it or involved in keeping it running and keeping the keeping the um, power running for it, uh, so to say. The ball reference again, a big Taurus. So, <laughs> you look, yeah, you, you know, you're looking at, giant magnet of some kind there, revolving magnet perhaps, which would suggest to me like a, a revolving rainbow. What I see here is a definite process. So you start out in the east with all this switching. That reminds me the three to the east of this picture um, of the three sets of gates. Um, when you come through, you have all these timing systems, which are the square generators here. 
and it's producing all of this alchemy going on in the underworld, which is, you know, it's leading to some kind of a process. You have your magnets involved. And when you get to the end at here at the top of the Western side of this sigil, the triangle on top reminds me of say the bowl, the bowl in Egyptian that, um, relates with, uh, um, the bowl that the alchemy is done in, that the leftovers is kind of stored in, put in. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and look, I mean, look at it as well. You're looking at, if, the, if that's representing the equator across the center, you've got square waves above and below it, you know. Uh, it's modifying waves again, isn't it? Looking at that, if they represent waves, because we have to keep putting the, the waves uh, in there. And another thing, the 33 legions. Now, here's a quick decode of legions, guys, that might help. What I think legions is now is it's actually representing leagues. As you, if you remember, you know, you can you measure the water depth in leagues. So, like 20,000 leagues below the sea. That You know, that has to play going upwards and downwards from, say, ground level. So it leads not only leagues can not only go downward if we're talking in liquid forms, which we are in the sky because it basically behaves as a liquid and it's full of particles and such. So you know, these leagues, 33 legions, could be a depth, it could be talking depth there, or you know, either in altitude or going down below the seas. Completely, because if you understand that outer space is ether as opposed to what we are meant to believe which is an ever-expanding nothingness with unprovable dark stuff that allows all of this to happen, but actually absorb and feel and see that, yes, we are in something there is an outer space, but it is far from what we have been packaged it as, because it can't be. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense to me, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, and for me, it's only because I hesitate because it's me saying out loud in public as opposed to in private, and that's all. That's why this is very precious to me, because this is us having a private conversation with everyone hearing us, and I am excited about all the input because I, you know, you know all of it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't you all back, lass. You give it all you've got. <laughs> you know, we've got, you know, this is our, we, we, you know, we may, may never revisit sigils again, but, you know, so now's the time to get everything in there we possibly can. I know, I know we probably will revisit it at some point in time as we learn more and progress more. You know, we can look back and say, ah, we can fix this, we can fix that. We know exactly what that means now and such and such. This is how it's going to happen. But yeah, very cool stuff. Okay, so the next one is Crocel, which is a duke. Crocel manifests as an angel with a tendency to speak in dark and mysterious ways. He was once a member of powers and now is a duke. He rules over 48 legions and can teach ge geometry and other liberal sciences. He is known to warm bodies of water and create the illusion of sound of rushing waters. Also, Cressel can reveal the location of natural baths. He is associated with water. Um, yeah, that's what I have on that one. Lovely stuff. Yeah, I like the uh, the reference there to the geometry. So, you know, if you're looking at, again, we're looking at uh, like quake information one, you know, the, the, the geometry, it's helping increase land mass. You know, that's exactly what we see with the quakes, isn't it? We we get the upward rising and, you know, all of a sudden we've got land masses appearing. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's uh, when the reference geometry like that, I think it's 
referencing, um, you know, it can have effects on the landmass. What I see in this picture is the down below is it has on the two sides the coils. To me, that would be since it's talking about warm bodies of water, it's the heating coils. Um, as we rise from the magnetics, it goes into a compression point. And when you get to the surface, which is the top of the, uh, well, to me, it looks like a chalice. The, that kind of looks like a volcano on the surface with possibly water around it. That That's just how I see that sigil. Yeah, I was going to ex make exactly the same reference when I started looking at it more then. Um You've got the larger one at the bottom, the smaller one at the top, you know, it's being directed. So at, at some point in that design, you're going to have the um, the induction zone, what I mentioned earlier. And straight away, that reminds you of molten rock and lava and, of course, the volcano. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much bang on. And that's what's creating the, the volcanoes. It's this model here. And what we're looking at, this one is, you know, one of the ones that would create create the volcanoes, for sure. It has to be. Boogeyman says the sigil on the far right, which is the one we're speaking of now, is an exact duplicate of the one used on a show called Diablo on stars. I don't know the show. Hey, Boogeyman. I don't hey, either, but it says, he says it appears to read something like the glory of God rests upon the wings of the angels and holds the same importance as the holy grail yes that's why i use the chalice because that's what it reminded me of was the holy grail the chalice i know close that's, the glory of god oh carry on i'll wait finished no that's all i had to say that's why i referred to it as a chalice because i was trying to think yeah. of the term holy grail but my mind went blank <laughs> so chalice was all i could <laughs> think of at that point <laughs> Well, go back to the you know the, the glory of God. Yeah, and what you're looking at is the the Creator's glory is a technological glory. This is what's been hidden. You know, people say, why would they lie about the shape of the world? Well, if there's technology involved, there's you, <laughs> you know, there's the, your cause. But anyway, you know, we're going back to the the glory of God rests upon the wings of angels. The wings uh, of the angels being the projections in the heavens. That is the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is the knowledge and access to and information on these technologies. Boogie also said that he is seeing sigils from the Anakian alphabet. Yes. So, and he's translating. Well, so these are known as the Anak the, the Anakian sigils, but I've also found them under the Solomon seals. So they're actually two different things that are the same, maybe. And a lot of these are going we're going through have different titles, but they're also known as Solomon's demons, but they're also known as fallen angels. So, you know, a lot of these things that we're learning are the same things, just different, you yeah, know, different areas different. of the world. Yeah, different areas of the world have different names for the same thing, just like our Jesus. I mean, how many names in different parts of the world have you heard Jesus in the same story told, told over and over? You know, you've got Horus and you've got Jesus and even Mexico has one called Jesus, but it's spelled G-E-E-S-U-S. -E -E -S. There's all kinds of the same depiction happening in different parts of the world and religions. Yeah, if, if it, he's just jumped in, it seems so. Yeah, Boogeyman. You know, that's what we show. That's why we do these kind of streams and the, the research we do. We're showing everyone the connections all mean the same thing. You know, it doesn't matter which race, religion, culture, or whatever, you know, whatever in the world the people are from. All these all these glyphs that we decode, you know, geo petro hieroglyphs, sacred geometries, scriptures, they're all telling the exact same story. And it's the story about the underworld, the luminaries, and the workings. It's not about people. It has never been about people. You've got to take people out of the equation in scriptures and factor in what they're talking about is pieces of technology that's been given name sex and character to help define its role and over the course of time and it, of course we've been putting into written language people now pick a book up they read a book and they bring those characters to life those ancient glyphs and such they're not telling you these are, represent people and it's nothing to do with sun worship they're showing you how the world works in a uh, glyph form that's exactly what we're trying to tell people they're all telling the same story they're telling you how the world works 
and everyone depicted it everywhere in uh, various types of glyph form, which ob obviously was the uh, the writing at the times. Also, I am Earth Baby um, said the writing of the angels, the celestial language. That's exactly right. This is a direct key. This the Anakian sigils are known as the angel, the language of the angels. So. You're spot on. This is a key. This is a key to show the processes that these pieces uh, perform and what the angel language is, which is actually um, an electromagnetical uh, perfection, really. You know, um, it's, it's on a perfect timing system. This is what our creator gave us. All of these pieces are in the underworld and, and, performing their processes that they were assigned by creator. You know, they cannot leave. They cannot leave their spot. They can't, you know, not do their job. That's what an angel is. An angel is not a weaned creature that comes down from the heavens. So an angel is actually projecting the heavens upward. Yeah. Yeah. I am Earth baby says angel means angle. No, no, it doesn't mean what we've decoded is angels are the creator's technologies. You know, that's why the, that's where the halo association comes from. Like the sun halo that we've seen in the skies, you know, the, some of them project halos and others don't. Because, uh, you know, that's, this is exactly what we decode angels are. So it's the creator's technologies. And the, the, or, in, or, in, uh, or in scriptural terms, it's the 144,000 sealed below. You know, sealed as in sarcophagi large rooms where this uh, technology has been sealed and contained. Carry on. I was going to say, uh, Boogeyman said, the word creates life, vibration, frequency, and sound, forming matter. Exactly. You know, it says in Scripture, God spoke the world into creation. That is the, the frequency, the vibration, and the sound. You're absolutely right. I think that that is the original language is yeah and creating life you know you're looking at just look at the magnet you know that is <laughs> that's your tree of life the tree of life in in apm research is the magnet because it all all this comes from the magnet you can go back to our adam and eve decode of lilith again it's talking about the magnet it's always been about the magnet guys so you know this is what humans have been taught how magnetics work and uh how to harness it and you know clearly everyone everywhere knew how it works so that's the important thing you know everyone around the world doesn't matter where you lived they were all being taught the same thing. Yeah. Right, back to you, where we are. Uh, do you um, want to the was, next one, or have you got input, input to put on this one, Rose? Yeah, I was going to ask Rose, do you have anything before we move along? Only the, uh, to highlight that this is, was specifically called a dark angel where um in other descriptions nothing was it was either fallen and just to highlight the arc demon thing that we had a couple of sigils ago as well um nothing else specifically that would either support anything that was given anything else it's just a tickle that's all Yeah. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> okay, so next we'll go on, if you want to move it, to number 57. Yeah, moving ahead. I'll put a, I'll put a little pause there, you know, so you so uh, it gives me time to actually pause it. <laughs> yeah. There we go, 57's up. Ooh, that's a nice one. Um, okay, so 57 is Furkas, and Furkas is a knight. The rank of knight is unique to him. He rules 20 legions. The etymology of his name is derived from Latin, the word fur furca, meaning fork, or from Greco-Roman, meaning Sepultry, which is a tomb. Um, 
Furkas is a knight and let's see, teaches philosophy, astronomy, rhetoric, logic, chiromancy, and pyromancy. It's for, he is depicted as a strong old man with white hair and a long white beard riding a horse while holding a sharp weapon, possibly a pitchfork. Um, he comes forth in the similitude of a cruel man. He teaches uh, philosophy. Let's see, I already said all that. Yeah, that's it. That's all I have on that one. Um, as they brought the fork, though, about, it reminded me of some of the electrical schematics, which is, um, it's showing that it says it's a data bus. That's what it's described as when you're looking at electrical schematics. <laughs> it does look um, like something like that, doesn't it? Yeah, it's also going to be um, a two-way repeater with four lines. Wow, that's like the um, the Nazca line one with the parrot. The the, the parrot, you know, had the parrot also was attached to a two element Yagi beam, which is a directional antenna. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, I, I like so. the reference there to a tomb as well, because again, you're looking at a sarcophagi. You know, so it's it's obviously in a tomb or it relates to a tomb. It actually and, does look uh, like three tombs next to each other. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, of course, the astrology references again, which maybe Rose can, if Rose has got any info on the astrology references. Well, I can't no, see anything else to put into that, but so I'll pass it to you, Rose. No, because um, Knight is a protector. So, the, what we think about traditionally is that a knight is a protector. And this is so uniform and beautiful. And we've got these beautiful on switches in the middle of lots of off switches and we've got this again we've got two magnets and then another triangle um fork as well fork is um spiritually a fork in the road is a decision So this, it could be a um, joint or a uh, junction of some of a of something. That fork could actually uh, represent lightning as well. When you think about it, lightning. It could. Because It's a uh, it looking at it, it almost is focusing on something, isn't it? And there's an outcome. Yeah, what will the outcome be today, people? <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just learning as we go. Yeah, same here. Yeah. We're gonna, you know, I can see us coming back to these at some point in the future. You know, we're gonna look back and say, "Ah, and now I see you." <laughs> Definitely. It's like seriously, how much stuff do we like surf over, and then you're like, "I know this is important, and I need to stick a pin in it," but I have no idea when I have a chance to have a look at it. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, we keep making these videos. We've got re videos we can reference, go back to. Yeah, I mean, we've noticed that before. You know, you go back to some of the older videos, we're pretty much on form. Nothing's really changed. The only thing we did change really was the alignment of the grid slightly to match new uh, data and information. Other than that, you know, it's pretty much the same. And the meaning of fallen angels. Definitely.
next. Um, okay, yeah, I was going to say, is there anything else on this one that we want to add? No, that's it for me, one. Okay. Um, so next is Balam. Uh, let me find it. Sorry, I'm multitasking here. Um, Balaam is a great and powerful king. To some, they call him a duke or prince. He commands over 40 legions. He gives perfect answers on things of past, present, and those things to come. He is known as being three-headed. One head is the head of a bull, the second of a man, and the third is a ram. He has flaming eyes and the tails of a serpent. He carries a hawk on his fist and rides a strong bear. At other times, he is represented as a woman riding a bear. Um... His name seems to be taken um, from Balaam, the biblical magician. He's also a fallen angel. I haven't been saying that, but um, of all the ones that we're talking about today, 27 of these are fallen angels, as well as being known as Solomon's demons as well as being depicted as the Enochian sigils, which is the language of the angels. Just wanted to throw that out there. Right. You throw it out there, lass. <laughs> yeah, I like, the re I like the reference there to man and woman, you know, male and female. What you're looking at, again, is left and rule, right and rule. You know, it's obviously capable of switching uh, polarities uh, and reversing, you know, what it does... One that is uh, so you know going from like a tornado to a whirlpool kind of reference you know that's the effect you would see would be something similar to that so it's switching you know it can switch both ways that's uh what we've got to look at them now when it mentions it could be male or female it's capable of switching and revert you know reversing what it does yeah and the heart again is a pump it's an action and right opposite the magnet as well this time yeah, and those humps, yep. those humps are inductors on the east side of the sigil. So it's inducting from the switch. So it's switching in, it's inducting whatever the energy, the electromagnetism. The arrow to me shows a direction that it'll flow. The magnet, the, the magnet itself is going to flow upward. So it's an upward pressure while the electrical current is going to cross over it and it's going to come to this three points of more switching. Um, I see another directional arrow that does look like a, well, like a little serpent's tail, like a little devil tail. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you think the magnet switching. Yeah. You're looking at electromagnetic switching, which we, we've seen them do. I mean, Roy's, Roy's uh, displayed that himself. Uh, remember Roy, Vincent Vincent? He was showing you doing it live, you know, electromagnetically switching magnets, polarities. Pretty cool stuff. Because it is sitting on a certain and it spits fire. Um, fire comes out of his eyes. Oh, eyes. Sorry. So that's a different process altogether. Which that reminded me of the book of Noah actually and some of the descriptions of the angels in the Bible how they have flaming swords coming out of their eyes and um, in the book of Noah yeah um, I think the, what is referenced there you know is the, the different forms of lightning and lights that we see in the sky you know your sprites your lightnings you better you know even even Enoch uh, mentions these different forms of lightning doesn't he Yep. 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 <laughs> right, we'll move on then, shall we? Okay. So, Alosis is a duke. 
Um, his title is the Great Duke, who has 36 legions under his command. He induces people to immortality and teaches art and mysteries of the sky, depicted as riding a horse with dragon legs. Um, he appears in the shape of a knight mounted on an enormous horse. His face has leonine characteristics. He has a ruddy complexion and burning eyes and speaks with much gravity. He teaches astronomy and liberal arts. He's also a fallen angel. Is that it one? Yeah, that's all I have on that one. Right, nice. So it mentions art of the skies and, and mysteries. You know, first thing I thought straight away, clouds. As you're out in the skies, you know, the, the constant changing of clouds. And, you know, again, you can see when you're on time-lapse videos, when you time-lapse clouds, they form in exactly the same place all the time, just about. So, you know, it's suggesting to me the technology laws are projecting upwards. You'll start getting clouds forming as the air gets energized around halos or rainbows or whatever it's projecting, it's electromagnetic fields energizing it. Uh, and of course it mentions gravity, you know, it's gravitation, the flow, the, um, it's manip you know, it's manipulating the, the flow in one direction or another, basically. Very interesting. I agree entirely because mm -hmm. How many real clouds have any of us seen for a long time? You know, we constantly see cloud cover in the sky that we know isn't real. I have been boring people for at least 10 years about chemtrails. And now they are so in your face and layered and it's just like, oh, we don't even realise that the light blue sky we're seeing is not actually our real blue sky because of the wispy cloud that you and I and everyone else is able to capture the halos, rainbows and nodes and things. Is people just are so grateful for the little bit of sun that they don't even see that their cloud, their sky is grey as opposed to blue anymore even, you know? Yeah. This, yeah. yeah. It's, a mess, it's a mess, isn't it? Yeah, you know, the, it's, it would seem Alice's is out of a job because the chemtrailers. <laughs> yeah, you know, to me, that, that one there is definitely involved in generating clouds and uh, sky phenomena. Any more input there on that, Rose? Not on this one. Maybe a little later. Okie dokie. Back to you, one. Okay. Um... So we are at number 60. Yeah, yeah, last one. Okay. So Cameo is a great president ruling over 30 legions. This one understands the voice of birds, bullocks, dogs, and other creatures and of the noise of the waters too, and gives true answers to concerning the things to come. He seems to stand on burning ashes or coals. This is the, one of the first parts of the Lesser Keys of Solomon. Um, he is a good disputer. Um, he is been shown to appear in the form of a black bird called a thrush but can soon change shape to a man that has a sharp sword in his hand
the title president suggest a parallel with the presiding officer? Cameo's name seems to be taken from the biblical first murderer, Cain. That's what I have on him. Lovely stuff. Yeah, I like the reference there with birds. You know, what it's looking at there is nature again. It's in harmony with nature. It's referencing birds. So it's obviously, you know, it's playing a part in the heavens. You know, it's not going to affect birds in, in a bad way. So, yeah, you know, it's considering nature, which they have to. Yeah, you see references that in Enoch. I think it was Enoch we read through once. And you could see that, like, there was concern for, you know, the harm that can come from this this knowledge. And to me, you know, it's the knowledge of the technology. It can harm if you don't know what you're doing. Um, on on um, Cain, you know, I think Santos has done a, a good uh, conversion on what Cain is. You know, Cain and Abel. I would I would uh, tell people to go and look at some of Santos's work on you know these characters kind of references, and he will put it into a different perspective of what you think it is. Um. Yeah, Boogeyman says the third from the second, the third from the left, second from the right appears to discuss the physical gates from which the stars and winds come from. Earth Baby says, I recollect a statement made about the wandering stars being continually reversed in relate, rotation as declared to the humans to be wise to their flips as a reprimand to their disobedience. So would you like to explain epicycles, FPV? Yeah, certainly. Why? Epicycles, yeah. Yeah, but the, the wandering stars, um, you know, the epicycles, if you look at uh, Ptolemy's work, when he when he depicted the luminaries moving, he actually had them attached to a separate circle, and he also rotated this circle. Now, this is when the globe appeared, uh, after, what, maybe 1,400 years of uh, Ptolemy's model of the heavens, you know, being, in, being standing the test of time, the globe appears and knocks it off its spot. And it seems they weren't happy with all these epicycle motions because it was too much work to factor in, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, the globe was invented. <laughs> that's, I think that's when it turned up and knocked his model off top spot. But, you know, epicycles, uh, Ptolemy factored them in. And what he was showing you, he's not only showing you how the sun moves, but he's showing you how the sun's halo, which is what we're showing in our halo uh, focus videos and other vid videos we record. He's showing you how this halo actually works and, and it slowly revolves as it goes across the plane. So, you know, this is where the epicycles uh, are coming from. Uh, going, going back to scripture, you know, the ascension, you're looking at it rising in the east, going across the heavens and then setting in the west. So, you know, so there's a rise there, as it comes down, it would be switched off, which is, you know, in in, in scriptural terms or, or even in glyph terms, it's, the, you know, it's a death, it's a shutdown, it's being switched off. Then it makes its way back to the east and... There's your resurrection again. You know, the resurrection is just it starting again the next cycle. Or have I gone off track there? <laughs> is that what you were asking for, one? Yeah, I just wanted people that maybe are not familiar with our work to understand why the luminaries appear to go backwards at times. Because of these right. epicycles. Yeah, all these, yeah, the epicycles. Um, yeah, what they call retrograde as well, you know. They might not actually be shutting down. They could be doing what the sun does in our 24-hour mode. You know, there's a there's a 24-hour mode here. If you watch our seasons video, you, you'll see where it pushes the sun further north. And we this is when we get the 24-hour sun, the Arctic sun. And, you know, retrograde luminaries or wandering stars, if any of them are retrograding, then really consider it's just being pushed up along the same path the sun uses to uh, get back to the east. So... You know, there may be more than one, just the sun using that 24-hour route, in other words. And ironically, actually, FPV, one of the most common um, things that happen with uh, retrograde planets is with the Mercury. It's all about technology and communication being interrupted. And it is a given that the moment that Mercury goes into retrograde, all com electromagnetic communication goes up the spout. 
up to and including personal relationships, as well as internet. <laughs> I would not be surprised, you know. That would not surprise me. Right yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I would not be surprised, you know, the, the, like um, Ron's demonstrated before with the alignments and things, the the forces and, you know, you're looking at a, a very powerful, powerful projector, say projecting upwards and punching through the, punching my electromagnetic, mag, <laughs> no, I'm getting tongue tied, electromagnetic data skyward. And if there's another one on a layer below, very close and, and nearby, you know, imagine the, the forces going on just around those two alone. Yeah. Completely. And if you actually um, understand the astrology that we're actually sitting within right now, there are four separate planets that are going out to guide right now, which is the whole reason why we're all having this conversation right now, apparently. Yeah, a comment in chat there from Mandy123. The creator could be the vortex Fibonacci. In this research, Andy, um, you know, the Fibonacci spiral and is coming from what we call the star halos or particle accelerators, electromagnets, in other words, you know, uh, ring magnets, electro ring magnets. That's what you're looking at. You know, this technology obviously deploys a lot of uh, this, those kind of like CERN, you know, look, CERN's a perfect example of what you're looking at. So that's, uh, you know, that's where it, that's where this these projections are coming from. And these are what are creating the, the spirals, the vortexes. Uh, you know, Tesla obviously understood it because he developed vortex maps to help people understand it and obviously harness its powers. You know, it's got to be lots of powers harnessable here that we're not seeing. But yeah, you know, this is where the Fibonacci spiral comes from. It's the perpetual flow around the accelerator. It just keeps spiraling and spiraling. If you watch our Power and Glory video, you know, we go, go into detail a bit more in that and you can see how it relates to uh, star trails. And, and you know luminaries in general this is where it's coming from it's the technology that's creating that and particularly for me i'm not quite sure how it fits but the declassification of pluto being a, a luminary and yet she was only he she was only classified as a luminary from 1929 in the first place or please correct me if I'm wrong, if it's a different date, but I know it's in the 20s at least. Um, that in itself is interesting because in astrology, they are st it is still considered one of the four planets that are still going into retrograde at the same time, at this time today that this is recorded. And that has a physical effect on your being. That also tells us that it's a complete timed system, like we're saying. If they were doing this a thousand years ago, or two thousand years ago, or whenever it was recorded, and they're still doing it today, the exact same thing at the exact same time, just like meteor showers being repeatable year after year after year in the same locations, this is a timed system. Our world is a timed system, absolute. There's no questioning it. Well, we're on time systems, guys. I'll, I'll mention about the end times, you know, if people in the chat, uh, the end times have been mentioned a lot in um, the Native American um, prophecies, you know, the, in the end times, we will see spider webs in the sky, uh, revelations. What it's telling you guys, what you're looking at here is the grand solar minimum. It seems every 200 years or so, the, the, the sun goes into what we call the grand solar minimum. So there's a, it's a cooling period. And of course, with a cooling period comes colder temperatures, more ice particles in the sky. Now, the ice particles, if you look at the halo of bit focus videos again, you'll see exactly what the ice particles are revealing. You know, it's just a cycle. You know, end times, don't worry about it. <laughs> it all it is is a countdown to the end of a cycle. And I think now this is where the main calendar was counting down to. So around about 2012 in the Gregorian calendar or thereabouts, uh, it was counting down to the next uh, grand solar minimum, basically. You know, And th this is what scripture would call revelations, that the construct is revealing itself. You're going to see more and more of the construct in the heavens 
than we've ever seen before in our lifetime. You know, this is what you're looking at with the, the Sun Halo, and we're making a model of that, so you'll see even more and more of it. But you only have to look at the uh, the Halo Focus videos that we've been sharing off other people, and, to, you know, to see what you're really looking at. You, what you're seeing there is the sun projector moving around in our realm, and it's clearly a projection from below. And the ice particles are just um, highlighting its profile as it goes past. You know, of course, you know, ice particles have got trapped light particles in them, and these light particles are trying to interact with the projection. Obviously, they can't very well because they're trapped in ice. Now, your chemtrailing, in our opinion, is an attempt to stop the ice forming. So, you know, you're going into global warming, climate change here. So in our research, we're kind of busting global warming and climate change because to us, they're just trying to stop ice crystals forming in the atmosphere or, or any kind of crystals for that matter because it helps reveal the sun halo. We are supposed to see this. Everything FPV just said. <laughs> yeah like seriously though um if you look at all the creation stories if you seriously understand if you start to investigate everything it all makes sense it is a tangled web we weave when first we set out to deceive <laughs> Yeah, and what a tangled web they've woven. <laughs> you know, we have to unravel all this, guys, and put it back. Our ancestors, our ancestors were clearly taught on you all this. So, you know, what we're doing is relearning what the ancients knew and depicted. So, you know, when we come to Flat Earth, our question was, uh, okay, if, if the world's not a spinning ball, what is creating and moving those lights in the sky? You know, you're looking at what could possibly create such a thing. Yeah, well, the only answer can be technologies and this is what this research is all about. We're revealing how the creators' technologies are responsible for what we're seeing in the skies and most of nature. Andy123 says something is pressurizing us. I was just going to um, pick that up, actually. One, you go ahead. Um, no, I'll go ahead. It says it could be the spiraling creating the cooling. But again, if you go to the power and glory, but go ahead, FPV, explain the spiraling. Yeah, the spiraling is the, that's what's creating our pressure system. Yeah, uh, if you go watch our uh, Power and Glory video, Andy, and you'll see how Walter Russell's work overlays into our work. Because you know, all man can do really. What we're looking at here is a creation on a grand scale, and I mean huge. You know, it's not human scale; it's grand, it's massive. And all man can do is reverse engineer it and scale it down to you know for human use in 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 so many ways. But uh, the star halos, you know, if you look at the star halos, to us, they are the projections from various size, very large sized accelerators. All these stars are just uh, nodes on the accelerator. What you're seeing is a lit up node, exactly what you see in the sun halo. Again, look at the sun halo videos and you'll see exactly what I mean. Now, all our luminaries up there have got the same configuration. We've seen the moon halo, we've seen the sun halo. We, well, I'm not sure about the ladies, but myself, I now consider Jupiter's moons to be just more nodes on a halo. You know, so you know what you're looking at is various projections at various altitudes in the sky. So yes, and now this is what's creating the pressure system, because because you've got left hand rule, right hand rule ones, you know, continually running. So that's exactly where the pressure is coming from. It could be uh, from above if it's a left hand rule projecting upwards. That would now force the pressure downward, you know, say a left-hand rule, forcing downward. It's forcing the flow downward, whereas if it was right-hand rule, it would force it upward. Because this is how you got to look at, you know, this technology is putting pressure waves out into the atmosphere through the ether, and it has to react to it. This is exactly how it works. Hope that helps. <laughs> what were you going to say, Rose? I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to... Oh no, sweetie, I, you know, the people have to understand that we, this is completely live. We all know why we're here, but none, we haven't had a, this is our conversation about things. Yeah, um, yeah, this, this and, is how we start private. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like, I, I, you know, I am Rosie. I'm a liberty to a bit. I just talk sometimes, but sometimes it's you know for a reason. In this instance, I'm 
I'm not quite there yet. Well, this is a learning process for everyone <clears throat> to understand what all this stuff means because we have been taught complete bullcrap. Um, so going back to this sigil though, the diamond in the center of those two spirals is a bridge rectifier when you're talking about electrical terminology. Just saying, I want to throw that out there because anybody that does understand electrics, electronics and electricity is going to see how these sigils, when you look up electrical schematics, you will see each piece depicted in these. Yeah. Well, Rose meant there, guys, you know, when she said she's not quite there yet. What she's saying, you know, she's not in the, she's not up to date on being able to explain it like me and Mon can because we've looked at so many things, you know, we, we can cross reference previous work and such like that. But I mean, Rose will pick that up as well. You know, all, she, all she's doing is picking up on what we've learned ourselves and shared between each other. And, you know, now Rose is involved in sharing it and bouncing all the knowledge off each other. So it's, you know, it's got a knock on effect. Rose, uh, so that's what Rose meant. You know, she's, she's catching up on being able to, describe it and give it the terminology it needs i mean you know i'm the first to admit i'm not the best at describing and giving this the terminology it needs but we still have to consider we've got to put it across in layman's terms so anyone could understand it because it seems this was how it was put across in the first place so anyone can understand what it's telling you exactly that fpv because i can i can go to a museum or whatever and collate um information for our research library and uh live decode in real time this complete discernment out of entire museums what is worth collecting and what is not yet at the same time saying out loud what i see and why i know that information is important is is not quite there yet I only found APM a year ago. I, you know, um, and before then, I just knew the earth was flat and nothing explained it, but I knew it was. And um, that was that. And then in this year, I have got here and now I'm here with you and one and live decoding stuff. And still, sometimes I don't know what to say, even though I see it. Yeah, it's understandable, isn't it? You know, you're finding the words to describe it and tell its story. And, you know, that's it is a it is a long process, but you know, hopefully over time, people's going to see it's it's just more of the same. And it depends how deep you want to get into decoding things. You know, like we're doing today with the sigils, we're going deeper and deeper into what you see in there. Um, but you know, Rose is right. You know, would you would you recommend a visit to the museum, uh, Rose, knowing what you know now? When I discovered Flat Earth, it took all my joy of being a being the geek that I already was, going to all these things and sucking up everything that I was being told. And then when I realised that it was even worse than I ever thought it was, um, all of these institutions became a negative place where now now I just see these things as being mislabeled as opposed to lies and um, because any lie has to have 80% truth to be believable that's what a long con is that's psychology so if we use their own data and weapons against them that if any institution any um mainstream information has an abundance of information to my mind now because now it's like that instead of just being in awe of everything because it's old it's now going well that's real and that's not and that's just someone having um loving their partner and this is actually about a lost process or a kept thing or a replication of something they're not quite sure why they need to replicate it but they're going to do it anyway 
And all of that is important because I can see it through the ages, even more so, like node one, two and eight, boom. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's that's how we've come at it really, isn't it? You know, we've, we've like, thought, well, you know, they've lied about the shape of the world, they're going to lie about everything and they really have, you know, history, geography, science, technologies, you name it, you know, it's all been lies and hidden everything's been hidden you know because that's what you realize at the end of the day you know when you when you start to hide the construct you are instantly a war of humanity to get to keep it hidden and that's where we're finding ourselves today you know we're <laughs> they're at war with humanity filling us with lies and indoctrination that just don't stand up to scrutiny okay so can you move it to 61 i sure can hold on So 61 is Murmur. Murmur is known as a duke and a count and an earl. He rules over 30, 30 legions. Two of his ministers go before him making the sounds of trumpets. Murmur in Latin means noise, whisper, murmur, and the sound of the trumpet. Um... He teaches philosophy and can oblige the souls of the deceased to appear before one and to answer any desired question. A murmur is depicted as a soldier riding a vulture or a griffin wearing a ducal crown. That's what I have on murmur. Yeah, for me, when I was just getting the, the sky relation there when it added the wings, you know, it's obviously involved in some kind of a mechanism in the heavens. Uh, interesting on, on the design, though, you know, it, when you look at the, the moon, <laughs> looks like phases of the moon there, doesn't it? Or possibly even an eclipse. It also reminded me of how the moon is seen in reverse from the north to the south. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? So the equator would be at the center point of that, yeah. that's what you're looking at with the moon guys you know this uh there is no dark side to the moon it's uh you see one image it's just got one image that's obviously taken locally from where the projector's getting the image from or it's generated you know whatever it is it's generated in situ and that image comes from where it's being generated from so north of it and south of it you're going to get a flipped and mirrored view now this it's you know rotating around and all that no it's uh flip what you would call it, the term proper term for it is flipped and mirrored because the image behaves like a water droplet. You know, you see a water droplet, it'll flip on the other side of it. So it's behaving like a water droplet in nature, the image. And it is, that's the only image it's got. There's, there is no other image. There. There's no dark side. What you see is what you get. So that's what you're looking at with the moon. And also in part one, Jew cell crown was mentioned specifically with one other schedule as well. Not that I can remember what that was. I'm looking through my notes to try and tie it up, but it's just a point of note out loud. That's good info. It's only been mentioned twice then, the Dussel crown. Exactly that. Anything else on Murmur? I like the trumpet sounds also because we hear those in our sky. We hear those. People hear those all over the world, those weird um, sounds that they don't have a clue where they're coming from, which we talked about that before in a video. You um, know what they, do you know what they remind me of now, one? Hmm. Very large doors opening down below. Yeah. It's definitely <laughs> something going on with the below. You know, it reminded me of different sounds. I went and listened to all kinds of different sounds, and it could be anywhere from, you know, things moving, opening, um, things starting up, running, because you, 
again, have to imagine the scale we're talking about here, but sounds from below would reverberate out into the sky. Yeah. And, and look at the, the symmetry the, of the sigil. You've got the magnet underneath. And then above, you've got a smaller magnet that is opening up into something else. You know, and both of them are crescents as well at the end, horizontally. It also looks like a chandelier there, doesn't it? I have, well, sorry, candelabra. The candelabra. Is that not the menorah? Probably is, yeah. We did a private one of that already. I know, we need to record those. <laughs> we talk about that much, we just forget yeah. to record it. But that's it, that's it for me anyway on Murmur. Okay, so we'll move on to 62, which is Aurobus, Auroribus. Um, Auroribus is also a fallen angel. Like I said, there's 27 of the ones we're talking about today are also related to the fallen angels. Um, Aur Auroribus is a prince. He has 20 legions under his control. He gives true answers of things past, present, and to come. He focuses on divinity and the creation of the world. Um, he also confers dignities and prelacies. Aurora, Auroribus is faithful and does not permit anything to tempt him. He is depicted as a horse that changes into a man. The name could come from Latin Aurorabias, which is a type of incense. That's what I have on Aur Aurorabus. Lovely information. I like the uh, reference there with creation straight away. You know, you're looking at volcanoes again, aren't you? Volcanoes, quakes, and you can see them sitting on the top there. <laughs> I think they probably, yeah, exactly. probably represent volcanoes. <laughs> little triangles, pop, pop, pop. And the little spiral there, you know, spiral energies, spiral upwards. Um, what was the other part I was looking at? It runs well, you know, it's uh, it's faithful, it runs well, it's obviously no problem. And it, it likes to reference there, you know, it cannot be, you know, nothing else will interfere with it. In other words, you know, other frequencies and such don't affect it. So it's not going to suffer from any external frequency or crossover of um, harmonics here. So yeah, you know, it's it's telling you there it's a very good, capable machine and it's it runs well, basically. To my mind, it's a time process that happens all the time, but not all the time. Yeah, I would say that there's probably three major volcanoes involved, just looking at the picture. Um, definitely on a time system, but you have to think these that, okay, so earthquakes and volcanoes are very closely related because when a volcano pops off, it gives off usually the size of about a five or six magnitude earthquake. And when the earthquakes come along, if they're, if they don't come out as an earthquake or shaking, the volcanoes erupt around it. Does that make sense? They're all, it's always happening. And when you study volcanoes, you'll realize that some of them are always erupting. They're always flowing out and always creating. Where others, the pressure has to build to kind of explode. But they do it on a regular basis. That's why they say they can predict, oh, this one's probably going to erupt, you know, around this time which they don't give us all the details in science, but I'm pretty sure they know. They yeah. know based on the system. What I like about that one as well, one is the, you look where the two spirals are, you know, imagine the quasar is the center and you've got a spiral above and below, you know, so it's telling you that it's pulling energies from in the atmosphere and possibly from below or it's grounded below and, you know, 
there's your ground and there's where it's pulling the electrical energy from in the top um, spiral. And it also, you know, when you look at it, it's narrowing them down into that square box where, you know, it's compression, isn't it? You're looking at compression again, it's a compressor. <laughs> yeah. And as it's the compressing three... ether into that box there, basically. Yeah. And where the three lines do go into the box there, that is showing us that that's a multiple, a multiple conductor cables or tubes. You know. There's multiple lines going into it. And I like the way there's three of those and three volcanoes on top. <laughs> yeah, very nice. <laughs> I concur. It is definitely. Yeah, it's that square thing again as well, isn't it? When you, uh, what did you just say the other day about the square uh, equation? and stuff one the square is always a time system yeah it means a timing it's a timer so would you know yeah yeah it makes sense you know it's it's it yeah. can obviously, it can obviously it's sorry it's just instead of me, instead of um me um giving something i mean it's learning something Certainly is, yeah. Back to you on where we on here, sixty-two, yeah. Want to jump sixty-three? Um, sure. So sixty-three is Grimori. Slide my words over so I can look at it. Ah, oh, look at that one. Okay, so jumps out that one, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. So before I even read the description, this one reminds me of that piece. That, that volcano system that I swear is one great big massive volcano, but I don't know that for sure, over by Japan, in between Japan and Indonesia. But anyway, um, let me read it. So Grimori is a very strong duke that governs 26 legions. Um he tells things of the past, present, and future, and about hidden treasures, and procures love. He is depicted as, where, as appearing in the form of a beautiful woman with a crown of a duchess tied around her waist and riding a camel. That's pretty interesting. That's the information I have on Grimori, so... It's a female energy, which means it's more of a negative versus the positive. Um, also, the other thing that stuck out to me in this picture is the, the, the things that look like volcanoes on top. Let me find it. Is It's a voltage network. When you're talking about electrical terminology. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, and following on from that. Um, yeah. I like the, the, I think uh, we can actually decode the past, present and future now. Going by, you know, listening to some of these, I think I can put that together now into a better way of uh, describing that. What it's telling you, you know, past, present and future. It's just a daily process. In other words, it's the same yesterday as it is today, as it will be tomorrow. It's just a constantly running process. You know, these are, these are you know, like the fiery ones. They seem to be running all the time. It's, it tells me it's just what, something that's running 24-7 when it mentions past, present, and future now. Yesterday, today, today tomorrow. <laughs> that there's your past, present, and future. It's going to be doing the same as it was yesterday, as it will tomorrow. Um, yeah, I think that's really good. What do you think, Ron? I was actually going to comment on someone in the chat. Sir Brendan, the moon is a perfect circle, which means it was not naturally created. Um, so I disagree. The moon is absolutely one of the natural luminaries. 
Um, I've watched all kinds of stuff also from like David Icke and such. But these luminaries have been here for all time. There's no one that's going to convince me that this is not, a, the moon is not a part of the same wandering stars, luminaries from the creation. That's just my opinion. I just wanted to. Yeah, well, you know, I, would, I would agree with that because if you, look at, um, if you look at our halo focus videos again, guys, you can see, you can see the moon's got the halo the same as the sun. You know, it's the same technology, just obviously doing different processes and roles. You know, the sun's perhaps uh, called a male because it's a positive kind of force and the moon could be the female negative force. And that's where you're getting two different kind of light forms out of it. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if Sir Brendan in the chat there is familiar with our research, but it would benefit benefit him to have a look through it and consider looking at the what they call the creator's glory being technological processes in the underworld that are very real. You know, that's what we're looking at here now. All this all these processes have to be considered as being very real in the underworld. Yeah. And um also in our next video, which I won't really get into it right now too much, but um, we're going to kind of explain how things can be appear solid like that. So stay tuned for the next big video we put out. Yeah. Uh, 64 then, yeah? Yeah, 64. Um, is Osei I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's O-S-E. O-S-E is a president ruling only three legions. Um, he is known for liberal sciences and gives true answers concerning divine and secret things. He also can bring insanity to any person. He can make them believe that they are a creature. He can also make that person think they are a king or a pope. Jose is depicted as a leopard that after a while changes to a man. His name seems to derive from Latin, os, meaning mouth lang or language, or asur, that who abhors. That's what I have on that one. <laughs> Very interesting there. You know, the name was uh, and the reference there to be, can make people think they're a pope and such like that, you know. <laughs> you know, you look at the, the, the title that people's got nowadays, you can see exactly where it's coming from. You know, it... <laughs> It can make people imagine they're a pope. I think it's. Uh, I think Ozzy has probably affected a lot of people in this world. <laughs> uh, you know, the, this entitlement they've given themselves. But anyway, jumping back to the glyph itself, the, you know, the the sigil. When you look at that, yeah, there's a nice, lovely, what you would call a um, schematic diagram, isn't it? You know, you get the coils at the sides, magnets in there. Yeah, nice little process going on. I'm not sure what the thing below represents, but it could be, you know, the force could be getting pushed downward, which could suggest a left-hand rule or direction of flow. Anything else on Ose? That's it from me. You got anything, Rose? No, that's good. It's just, it's truly symmetrical again, isn't it? So, um, and it was a president, so I think it's a actual place as opposed to a process. Um, because it created a, something as well, didn't it? Yeah, let me look at the word president as well, you know, you know, it's uh, suggesting it's like in charge of or responsible for, you know, a, a, another amount of it, doesn't it? On to the next, yeah. 
Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, next is Amy. Um, we're at 65. Amy is pretty interesting. Um, Amy is a president appearing initially as a flame. He rules over 36 legions. He is both of the order of angels and potestates, which means powers. Amy is the 58th spirit. Um, Amy is a flame of fire. He makes one he makes one marvelous in astrology and in all liberal sciences. Let's see, he also hoped after a thousand two hundred years to return to the seventh throne. And that's what I have on Amy. I like the word in the order, you know, the order of angels. It's putting it in a category of like the, you know, when it mentions the flame, it's put in a category like the seraphim, like we found in the Decoding Scriptures 2 video we did, you know, the fiery ones as, as they labeled them in Scripture. Yeah, very nice. It even looks oh. like fire on the top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a coil going on there and some other stuff. Yeah, I like I like Jimbo's input on that. You know, you could see it more for the schematic where he from where uh, what he what he his own knowledge base tells him. You know, what you need here is people that know schematics and you know they like Jimbo. They look at it and say, Ah, yeah, now I see what you are. <laughs> I'd also see an elephant. So Ganesh, maybe, which I know uh -huh. is an ode. Yeah, I can see the elephant though you mentioned it. Yeah. I am Earth Baby said how I wish your research would delve into the Pistis Sophia. Is that that text that we were going to do, FPV? With the I'm, um, I'm not sure one. We've looked at that I many now, is. but Hold on, yeah, we'll we'll, my... we'll um we'll look into it after this video and you know if we if we what we do is we look in if we can see the technological aspects jumping yes. out as we know we're on the right track and you know yeah that's worth another decode if that's what the, we decide the pistis sophia was the books we were going to look into that is also relating to the different like um chambers of the underworld if you remember it has different um oh Jason's got the link in the chat there anyway, so don't, don't yeah. worry about it too much. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, we actually have an absolute plan to go into that, just so you know, I am Earth Baby. Um, so sorry. Anything else on? Yeah, that's Amy? it for me on, on Amy. That's it for me, one. Yeah, apart from the Ganesh thing, that's cool. Awesome. Okay, so number 66 is Orias, which in a way reminds me of Orion, because sometimes words um, get changed over time, and that's a lot of where our confusion comes in. But um, let's see. <clears throat> Where do I have? Oh, well. Somehow I missed Orias. <laughs> Don't worry about that. If you want to look for it, I can uh, put some input there. Yeah, let's just look at the picture here. Yeah, it was the first thing I looked at it, it reminded me of a, of a very large antenna. <laughs> you know, yeah. look at the design of it, it looks like a, a big antenna standing there, doesn't it? It does, and it's got switching all around, which I'm starting to wonder if these switching 
pieces aren't possibly just possibly just putting it out there connecting to a different piece it's switching from this piece to the next piece yeah or a waiting input from something else yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's how i would look at it you know the back to them arches again that you see in depictions you know the archer to me would just be a message being relayed in that direction that the arrow is facing so you know it's communicating with someone else in the chain isn't it maddie divine is, said similar can, in shape to russell's power generator yeah you can also, also you know reference that with what we've seen on the mimic map on you know these signals going back into on the mimic map then very large signals that's you know that to us is events and signaling and processes going on and that's what the mimic map's been recording you know we've, we've talked about that before so it's probably worth mentioning again you know we are seeing these signals on recorded data um so the only thing information i do have on arias is it's a fallen angel and this is the one that grabbed me which is why i asked about constellation it is depicted as a lion with a serpent tail Very nice. You got anything to add to the lion there, <laughs> Rose? Yeah, we'll do. Yeah. You remember the Nazca lines one, the antennas? <laughs> That's oh, where, yeah. you know, as, as soon as the image, as soon as I looked at it, I thought, wow, big antenna. Because, uh, you know, the, the Nazca lines, guys, if you look at some of our older, older research, you'll see where I was doing the Nazca lines and line tracing them. I come across an antenna and it was about five mile long in length on the ground. You know, mainstream will have you believe men with sticks carved these into rock and even scalp the tops of mountains off to put them there. No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, definitely an antenna. Um, this one. Can I share for a moment? Yeah, of course you can. Hold Just on. to I'm show. Just, I'll, I'll just stop. The exact NASA, Nazca line, because I actually have the exact Nazca line. Um, don't let me share yet, because I don't want to share the link, but I want to put the picture up first. Yeah, yeah, no worries. So don't don't present me just yet. Yeah, we're on standby. Um, don't worry. <laughs> okay, now you can present me this one. All right. This is the one that popped out in my it. mind. Okay. This this is your Nazca line, and it looks very, very similar to that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, look for our videos, guys, and you'll see the references there, what we mean with glyphs and sigils, and, you know, it's just more decodings, more, dif more different cultures, um, depictions of the technological process on a grand scale. I mean, the Nazca lines are truly amazing. I still haven't finished them. You know, when I realized what they were and how it fitted into a world model, it was more important then to get that message out than continue, you know, adding more lines. But yeah, good example one. Very nice. You want me to stop presenting you, yeah? Yeah, so I can shut it down, yeah. Stop presenting me and I can stop screen sharing. Right, you stop. That's it. Yeah. All right. So now I can. Um... OK, so I found a couple of things. There you go, sigils back up here, Rose. Thank you. So going back to Andromeda, Andromeda Andromeda is the um, right now. So going back to uh, sigil part one, I explained that um, we currently use twelve zodiacal signs and constellations to represent when we are born. Um, the ancients used twenty-four. Um, which is basically the next layer out of the constellations that you uh, see. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so Andromeda, going back a little bit, but I think it's very important because um, when you actually look at Andromeda as a constellation, it actually looks like a stick figure person. And it rules April 
2nd to 9 and April 19th to May 8th in the Northern Hemisphere. Andromeda, the princess, chained in space, waiting for her hero, Perseus, to rescue her from the sea monster, is an autumn and winter constellation lying due south of her mother, Cassipiera. In the Northern Hemisphere, to find her, first locate the, the bright W-shaped constellation of Cassiopeia near the pole, which is one of the easiest to recognise. One of Andromeda's stars also forms the corner of the great square of Pegasus, the winged horse. Beneath them, nearer the horizon to the south, in the area of the sky is known as the sea in the ancient Babylon, Swin Pisces. The fishes of the zodiac and Cetus, the sea monster ready to devour her, in the centre of the constellation lines the famous Andromeda galaxy, more than, please forgive me, two millennium year, light years away. It is the most distant object in the universe which we can see with the naked eye glimmering through the veil of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Mm. Fantastic info, Rose. Yeah, you made me think of something else uh, about the constellation references and stories. You know, what you're looking at with the constellations, guys, you know, the, 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 the heavens are basically a map of how it works when you think about that. You know, you've got these constellations with various creatures in you know this is not by you know this is this is by design this is no coincidence why the way they're even, they're even there you know it's the sky is basically like a map the the luminaries they're mapping out how it works for you and telling your story you can't hide this okay so. not at all and i have two more if you don't mind one if you don't mind Go ahead. I just have a ride at the crown of the north wind. So, Orion, which is June 1st to the 7th, and June 17th to the 27th, so mostly Gemini. Um, Orion, the great huntsman, is the brightest constellation in the heavens and can be easily recognised. He rises in the southeast in October and sets in the southwest in March and can be seen also in the southern hemisphere, but inverted on clear winter evenings as he moves slowly through the sky wearing his glistering belt through which the celestial equator passes and with the dog stars which we know is serious at his heel it is not hard to see why he was believed to be the most handsome man in the world has ever known also could be considered lucifer isn't it nor as the moon new moon rises why he was the only love of artemis the virgin goddess of hunting and the crescent moon Rigel, the mariner star, which marks the Orion's left leg, is a blue-white supergiant, please forgive me, 57,000 times brighter than our sun. Better go uh, sorry, Betelgeuse, which also marks Orion's right shoulder, is a reddish topaz supergiant, so large that he can contain the orbit of the Earth around the Again, please forgive me, I can't even finish that sentence. But what intrigued me about um, the things we're talking about right now and the constellations um, is the crown of the north wind, which is Corona Borealis, which is October 27th to November 11th, which is basically Scorpio, my dears. Corona Borealis, Northern Crown, or the Crown of the North Wind, lies upside down behind the back of the great hero. Hercules, the main star of this small but brilliant constellation, is Alpheca, and that's A-L-P-H-E-C-C-A, the central jewel in the crown of red. Indian jewels in fiery gold, which belong to the Cretan princess, 
Aradne. <laughs> you know, the spider thingy. Um, <laughs> Behind it, yeah, no, seriously. Behind it, stars to which the fortunate keep keep tuned. I'm almost there. Um, to which the fortunate were thought to go after death. The four hundred galaxies invisible to the naked eye, a thousand million light years distance. Please forgive me. Um, it is best seen in summer, lying between the Harp Star Vega in the Lyra. A constellation to the east of it and Altarcarus in Booties, the bear keeper to the west. The cronioids, the meteors of the crown, stream towards us from the direction from mid-April to the end of June. And when you actually see the constellation, it literally looks like a crown that you would put on your head. Fantastic information, Rose. I love your input like that. You know, you, you're teaching us things, you, you're relating it and correlating it and cross referencing it. Fantastic. It really is to listen to. You know, lots of information there, guys. You know, just about one sigil and then off gates. And, you know, thinking about that now when you look at the antenna, it's probably obviously involved in activating something to do with the north gates and the winds. Very interesting. Yes, thank you. And reading those descriptions of the constellations and relating it to the, all the stuff that we said here, you could probably eventually almost place these pieces and where they're at. I mean, they're yeah, probably, that, that was the you know, that was the plan originally, wasn't it? You know, we were going to overlay overlay the ones that one knows where they are on the map, but there's that many, and they're going to overlap. It would kind of get messy. But we did, uh, you know, we were going to do that. We did do a test run of making sigils and like rotating on the map. <laughs> we may, we may do it another day, you know. Yeah, Who knows? it would be an ongoing project for sure. But you'd have to look at a lot of information to get the specific locations. I'll be back in a few <laughs> minutes, guys. I'll be back in a few minutes. You know where? Yeah. So, um, yeah one <laughs> do you have any more on constellations you can read while he's gone well i have um quite a few different ones here because when you read that um, one and we thought back to the you made me think back to the ones that you know describe them riding a bear and i'm sure that yes. there's others where they're riding a dragon and there's others that they're riding you know a bull <laughs> i'm just gonna um randomly pick up uh because the way i have this information is it is cards but that's only because that's they're like flash cards as opposed to um tarot or anything else and it is also attached to a constellation map and then a, a booklet of um the person's un um knowledge and understanding of this is how astrology was before it changed and we have to understand that astrology has changed several times over the last several hundred years for various reasons. And um, part of that is because um, they needed to make astrology work in order for this spinning sphere globe model to work because previously as a stationary flat plane astrology had always worked rather perfectly um so um that's one of the reasons why i dive delper uh, deeper to um other things so i'm just gonna um oh the ship of the argonauts yes so this uh constellation is the ship of the argonauts and um, we have all seen the movie, I am sure. And this constellation rules July 8th to 17th, which I think is very relevant as we're on the 16th of July, and September 22nd to 28th. So that would mean that would be when it is visible in the southern hemisphere, but not in the north. 
So this huge constellation of Argo Navis, the ship of the Argonauts, has now been divided into three, Carina, Bella and Pupis. And it, is, and it dominates the skies of the Southern Hemisphere from January until May. Carina is the keel and its brightest star is Cantopus which was worshipped in the desert as the source of the colour in jewels and can best be seen in the northern hemisphere in early February from the latitude of Florida. 1200 times brighter than our sun, it lies due south of the dog star Sirius in Canis Major. Canopus is called after the Greek captain of the fleet which conquered Troy and it is still the spacecraft navigate used in spacecraft navigation. Please, please forgive me. The star, <laughs> the star Markeb is part of Vela, now a separate constellation which forms the sails of the ship. That's awesome. I'm back. I'm back. Hey. Welcome back. I missed, I, was the, just I missed the description. She was talking about spaceships. No, I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> I trouted her. <laughs> no, no, she was reading some more about the constellations. It was very good stuff. But yeah. It was, yeah, we were just was selling some time. <laughs> very good and very re relevant, wasn't it? It was relevant, yes. <laughs> yes, it was very, very cool. And there, you'll just have to go back and listen to that part afterwards. Yes. FPV. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> um, okay, so can we move on to 67? Yeah, good to go. All right, so this one is Vapula. Vapula is a duke, a great duke, that is over 36 legions. He is known for philosophy, mechanics, and sciences. Um, Vapula is depicted as a griffin-winged lion. And that's all I have on that one. But looking at the sigil itself, I see um, coils and those waves again, which... Um, are inductors. Those are different types of inductors coming from both sides. Yeah, I would agree there. And the heart, you know, it reminds me of a heartbeat, like um, in electrical terms, you know, you, your heartbeat would be there, um, like Roy's depicted with his his experiments with, um, you know, magnets. Uh, he has a little bulb flicker in a way, so he knows there's a signal there. That's what he calls the heartbeat. So, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Or, or it could also represent giving life, you know, the heart. Uh, interesting also the way it words it because you're looking at machine projector wings there with the with the wings uh, creature. So it can project. It's telling you there. It's a projecting projection style technology. What it's projecting, I'm not sure. <laughs> right. Um, anything else? Before we move on, no, that's it for me. No, all cool. Okay, so Zagan. Um, Zagan is a king. And I had a thought, and I'd have to go back and probably watch both videos again to see for sure, or just refer to my notes and go back over all the sigils myself or whatever. But I don't know if all the kings happen to be these square waves. I'm not sure but it was a thought that entered in my mind that we might need to go back and check on. Um, but Zagan is a great king, and he's also a president. Or maybe these time systems might have two titles. I'm not sure. There's got to be a trend or something. But um, again, anyway. So King President Zagan is over 33 legions. He makes men witty and can also turn wine to water and water to wine and blood to wine. Um, he can turn blood into oil and oil into blood. 
other of his powers are turning metals into coins that are made with that metal. Example, gold into gold coin, copper to copper coin. Zagan is depicted as a griffin wing bull that turns into a man. That's what I have on Zagan. Lovely. Yeah, very nice. Uh, and I was, you know, same, same as you on, you know, the square waves, right, be, being right there again. Yeah, interesting. You know, the kings come with the square waves. Uh, obviously, looking at again at wave manipulation, the square wave. You can see there's a step down there in the wave, like midway through. It's like steps down then picks back up again. Um, also interesting, it references oils, you know, oil. <laughs> You know, oil exists. It's telling you there. You know, it, it's it can be relate to oils or metals. Yeah, you know, you're looking at ore again or minerals in the ground, aren't you? More um, more revealing information on the technologies that you know help create our realm. You know, because we're looking at creators, maintainers, and destroyer type technologies. Yes, and this is a process as opposed to a thing. Yep, yeah, it's, a it's, process. Got, it's got to be a process, yeah. yeah. It's very timed, very, yeah. very timed. Um, it's definitely to do with magnetics, and the square waves are showing us the flow of the electromagnetics. There's a couple of switches that go on, and and this is a timer. That's yeah. what it's and showing. The line, and the line suggests um, a projection again. And even when you look at it, it just looks just like a circuit, does a regular circuit. It reminded me of the um, under the water below Australia, that piece that I outlined. Remember that? Yeah, in between Tasmania and Australia, the um, the triangle. No, no. Oh, the, oh do you mean the the seabed lines? Yes, the seabed lines. <laughs> That's this, it. This one reminded me of that particular one that we also oh, used yeah. to show that it looked like what was in the clouds. And it also looked like CERN. Yep. Because it, yep. Because chemtrails aren't just grids in the sky they are creating smart clouds that you can genuinely see look for each other in the sky that replicates a different process because they're trying that's the artificial where regular clouds they just um ah. Yeah, what it suggests what it suggests to me is um, you know, this particular one is manipulating things below ground when it talks about metals and oils and ore and things like that. So it's um you know, it's more affecting things at a lower level than a, than an upper level. Where's my hand? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um sorry guys. Okay. Uh -huh. Can we move to 69? We're almost through these. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Holy cow, that one's freaking awesome looking. But um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so this one is Valak. Valak is a president. Valak is an angelically winged boy riding a two-headed dragon attributed with the powers of finding treasures. He has 30 legions under him. Valak gives true answers about the hidden treasures he reveals where serpents can be seen and delivers them harmlessly. That's what I have on Valak. 
I would say that one seems to be involved in eroding like balancing things out. You know, mentioned serpents, which we can relate to the the waves, you know, the waves coming, the various waves from the accelerators and the balancing out there. Um, yeah, you know, and harmlessly. So, you know, it can maybe counteract harmful things that's coming out of certain streams of energy, sir. Or maybe, you know, it's maybe just a reverse flow to help slow it down and not generate really serious winds. <laughs> That's what I was thinking when, when you read that out. Definitely some sort of junction box, isn't it? You know? It reminds me of the center of the grid in a way. And how it spreads out into the other parts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, put the equator across the center. Yeah, and the circle would be the center. And it they spread out into other pieces of the grid. That's that's the first thing I thought I saw when I looked at it. And it's true. It's a true representation of itself. There it doesn't lie, it just is. And it's a precedent, so if I decode it correctly that a president means a physical place, uh, a, a function, a mechanical object as opposed to a process, then, yeah, you know, because, yeah. <laughs> and also it is, uh, controls 30 legions, so again, it could be, if a just suspend a legion is a constellation for for instance yeah interesting <laughs> yeah the father because all of these are processes when they are physical they're still a process because they're still a function but sometimes they represent a physical thing as a mechanism and sometimes the process is because it it's explaining what it's creating if this kick, mechanical process kicks in and i you know yep yeah another piece of the larger machine <laughs> what part of yeah, it's hard to say isn't it at some points yeah, I mean, I looked into a lot of this, the Enoch and stuff, um, probably about two years ago. And I'll, I'll tell you the start story at the end of this, depending on how long this goes on for. But yeah, you know, we'll, we'll stay on target for now. I was going to sidetrack there, but I'll leave that till later. Trap you, stop sidetracking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so we'll move on. And the next one is number 70. Andras. Um, Andras is a Marquise. He has 30 legions under his command. He shows discord. Um, appearing as a winged angel body with the head of an owl or a raven. Riding on a strong black wolf and wielding a sharp and bright sword. Um, this one is considered to be highly dangerous if precautions are not taken. That it, Wanya? Uh, Hold on. Yeah, that was it. Sorry. I have different pages. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. yeah, very interesting. You know, the wings again. And also uh, can be dangerous. So you're looking at um, high, you know, high projections. It can project. It's because obviously putting out high frequencies or rf you know it's something to be very well aware of <laughs> yeah 
that's the, that's the first thing you get from that, isn't it? Okay, I'm um, going to be look, in a sec. Yeah, go on. You, you go ahead, Rose. What if it's describing the exhaust of uh, the exhaust node on the halo? A cleaning cycle? Yes. I think if it was involved in on one of the nodes, it would have a more prominent role, or you know, be talked about more, or a better description, maybe. Maybe, but when you look at it, it's it does. Yeah, have... well, it, I think it's going to be you know, it will be the same technology, but it's obviously doing something different to the others, and it seems to be dangerous with this one. Yeah, that's why I thought it was because dangerous, they... like expel take yeah. rid of well as an as an expelling you know the, the expelling i think that they could kind of refer to would be the high frequency or rf or you know up in the gigahertz frequencies which you're looking at 5g you know that kind of frequencies is, is probably what it's talking about especially when it, you know it, man, it adds the wings to them so you're looking at high frequencies there and the owl and the raven reference too yeah yeah, you know, there's things to be aware of with these high frequencies. It just jumps out at you, that, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It also looks like a banner. You know? That would have been held, or could have been held. With the staff in the centre and the flowing fabric either side of your colour. It does, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? <laughs> it makes you wonder where some of these designs came from. Eh? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, a banner that would be carried into, say, battle or it, a right, announcing the arrival of someone. Yeah. Yeah, good reference, that. Eh? Over to you, one. Okay, so number 71 is Horace Howers. <laughs> um, I actually have no information on this one, but the first thing that it made me think of when I read its name was Howers, Hours. And to me, the switching in this one reminds me of how the sun would cross across our realm and give us our different hours of the day. But that's just the first thing that came to mind. Yeah, timekeeper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's time, it's time mechanism or timekeeping, yeah. Nice circuitry, kind of look around it again with the coils at the sides, the magnet in the center, and the, the spiraling waves from the ether obviously being attracted to it. I think that's what's representing there. Yeah, and I think the other reason it reminded me of that is because it really does look like, almost looks like, when you look at the Nazca lines in an overall sense, the entirety of them. It has the two angel wings coming up. It has the great big magnet in the middle, kind of like the little, the head almost appears when you're looking at the entirety of the Nazca lines, which yeah. is a whole realm yeah yeah i was going to say you know for people that aren't sure what one's talking about there if you look at one of our older videos where they got the nazca lines and i'm showing you all the line tracing they've done you can see the shape of like an angel forming out of these lines a giant angel shaped well you know body and the cern the cern ceremony actually had dancers uh take up that shape uh, if you look in uh, i forget which video it was now the 12 gates was it where i put a decode on the cern ceremony You'll see, you'll see certain uh, like a group of dancers take up the shape and moving or moving around. <laughs> Very cool. Anything to add to that, Rose? Mute is a pain in the bum. No, I uh, I have nothing to add. It is um, everything you said. It's it's intriguing, isn't it? The way it looks, definitely. 
It just reminds me of something, but I don't know what. It reminds me of the other one that had the heart there instead of the cross. It's you know quite similar looking. One of the ones got a heart there, and one's got a cross. You know, it's very similar design around them. But that's just me. <laughs> Back to you, one. Okay. Um, the last one is Andrew Andrew <laughs> Andrew Alphas. <laughs> Sorry, some of these names. Um, Andre Alphas is a great Marquise with the appearance of a peacock who raises great noises and teaches astronomy. When in human form, it teaches geometry in a perfect manner. He rules over 30 legions and has the ability to turn man into bird. Um, he is, let's see, he is uh, pertaining to menstruation, among, among other things, which is a time system as well. So we have it on a timer, and it's uh, able to switch frequencies, it seems, from a man to a bird. You know, the man would fall into a medium frequency and the bird into a high frequency and uh, what was the other part i scribbled somewhere down somewhere then <laughs> no i can't even see it <laughs> oh the man the bird yeah that was the that was the reference you know switching from man to bird that's telling me it can, you know it's just capable of switching frequencies it's involved in uh, it's involved in switching frequencies in somewhere yeah also when it mentioned the menstruation that's kind of weird i mean just because they do relate thing everybody wants to relate this to people but a woman's cycle is very on point it's very timed and a lot of um women time their cycles with the moon phases they can it, it will happen at the exact same time every month it will always happen i want to reiterate something as well um I've been uh, peacocks in culture, um, especially because of halos and stuff. F originally, I thought it may have been a representation of that, but maybe understanding that the moon also and other luminaries, their moons may be nodes as opposed to moons, etc. Um, what if the peacock was the visual representation of the moon's individual halo and that could be expressed as the menstrual cycle? It's I, I haven't gone too far into peacocks because I haven't finished with my spiders yet, um, but it is something that has, I have a pin in and it just this is the first time that i've had peacocks and possible moon at being associated with the same thing very cool another rabbit hole <laughs> just what you needed draws more rabbit holes huh? um david said what if you placed all the a's north For instance, 69, one click anti-clockwise and then 71 and overlaid the symbols. I see a code. He said he's thinking out loud. Um, I've thought about placing these too. I mean, I don't know if you were here for that part, me, but but <clears throat> we'd have to read like everything in the world to figure out exactly where they go. I think they're all connected. That's just my opinion on it. I really do. Me. Yeah, yeah, they're all going to fit into the grid there somewhere. You know, these are these are just some of the one hundred forty-four thousand that's mentioned in scripture. You know, it's obviously a very extensive set from whichever culture you look at. You know, every every culture we're looking at, it's the same with what we're looking at here. Really, you know, their way of depicting how it works. 
and we wouldn't like just put the A's in the north because a lot of these tell us exactly where they go. Some are in the north, some are in the east, some are in the south, and some are in the west. In the descriptions, they tell us where they are as far as direction, but it'd be up and to us to... One. It's not just where they are, it's also within the seasons where they are. Sometimes okay. because yeah. they're always there, and sometimes it's because they happen to be there because of a timed event. Yeah, they would click on during different seasons, absolutely. Yeah, timed events and, you know, the ones in the north, uh, you know, in the northern summer, so the, some of the ones in the south won't be as active. That's what it's going to tell you in the world model, you know, things shut down in the south until they're required to start up again. Some, some continually run, obviously some are just waiting for timed events and that they're turned to appear and do what they do again. Yep. So that was the 72 Look. sigils. So that concludes the 72 guys, but uh, I've got some more stuff here for you to look at. <laughs> we can decode it if you want, or uh, if you don't know, you know, if you want to stop for a break or anything, just say, um, or if you want to get, want to get, a, get go and get a brew and I'll put some more things up on screen because, like I mentioned before, you know, what we're looking at here is a very extensive set and we've only decoded 72 of what seems to be a very extensive set. Now, what I was going to mention before about, um, some work had done in my very first video. It was relating to um, the Enochian keys and the, you know the black cross and things like that. If you want to, if you look into the first video I put out, you'll see some uh, nice references in there. And again, it's now overlapping with this. So it wasn't, you know, you're not just looking at sigils. There's there's lots of more information. And when I looked into it a few years ago. I like traced it all back to a university in Greece and then the trail went dead. You can't get any more information on Enochian information. So, you know, that to me tells me there's a lot of merit to it, but it's to be kept hidden inside some university. So, you know, just for I'd mentioned that, that's what I was going before. <laughs> so what do you want to do with these ones, guys? Just look at them, uh, browse, you know, just let them scroll by. I have there's a, a few. Um, I'd like to check two FPV actually at some point. Say again, Rose, I missed that. I sorry. Have a few, uh, visuals I would like to interject to in, at some point too, if I can. It, what screen share, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Do you want to do, do it after these? We'll just get through these and then you can screen share what you've got. Uh, yeah. Set them up and then I'll see what I can do. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. If you're stuck, just say, you know, when you go to screen share, make sure you slept, make sure you've got the program open or the window open you want to screen share in your browser, say. And, you, you know, then you would click, um, don't click, uh, don't click full screen, select um, application window. And then you click that, it should show up in that window and just click the one you want to screen share. Uh, would you want to, me to do with these guys? Just let them play through. There's only a little handful of them here. We'll just let it scroll by because there's something at the end I want to show you. Yeah, we can let them scroll through um, decoding them as the same way as everything else. You know, look to magnetics and electrical schematics to see the different components of each of these. Yeah, you know, compare these to the same what we've been discussing before, guys. We don't have any information on these ones. But, you know, it's just more of the same. Yeah, again, you know, same designs. Well, not same, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and notice it's all how relating to the workings of the realm. We went up to 72, and then there seems to be a bunch missing. And now this one starts at 175. Yeah, I'll just let it scroll up slowly, slowly to the point where I want to show you something. Yeah, more of the same. Those ones there and those large ones actually yeah. reminded me of constellations we discussed as a few days ago when I seen these. One sent me these, and that's when we were looking at them. Look at those. Those are amazing. And they look like keyholes. <laughs> they do, don't they? Yeah. I like the, the shape at the bottom as well, but it kind of, see how it's gone from being flat line to being... Uh, warped into an arc. Yeah. Interesting. Huh? You know, is that the ground plane we're looking at there being warped a bit? 
again, you know, the the, the sun is the, I think that eight does that represent a certain luminary? That one, the sun. Interesting stuff. I'll keep going. Now we're getting into uh, outside of sigils into other designs here. See these ones here. And now these to me, that could be the representation of the tree of life, the way you got these energies at the side of something. Or, you know, it could be the projection form in save. And... You've got any, any input you want to put on that? Go ahead. A fur cone. A lot of the time you see a fur cone in the hand of a god or a, a male or female doing something. And fur and uh, even Christmas tree is um, still in the modern day psyche of it being important because it um, means something. Yeah, certainly does. Yeah, you know, they, these might look very, very primitive, but there's a hell of a lot of information in that design alone. Jesus Jones wants to know if these, if you could mirror these sigils, that'd probably be have to be a whole nother three hour stream, though. <laughs> mirror them? He probably just mean share them, does he? Can, yeah, of course, you know, if people want to share our work, yeah, if you mean mirror it on your channel, yeah, sure, go ahead, no problem. You can better any of any of our work, guys, if that's what you meant. <laughs> I thought he meant flip them. Oh, as in flip the image. Yeah. Well, the, you know, we've aligned them with the number at the top. So obviously someone's took into account the alignment and placed the numbers accordingly, I think. And some of these names around them, that these last few you've shown, are similar to um, archangels, which maybe is maybe why they're bigger larger look at that one there that if, that's not, if, not, if that doesn't look like energy being directed that one probably would be probably look better uprighted in fact you know if you consider this centerpiece the magnet a ring magnet and <laughs> this is going to put a warp in the uh ether yeah, to me it looks like, in the ether it looks like the projector sh like shooting this the moon out <laughs> to me <laughs> Does, doesn't it? or how the east gate would work yeah mm -hmm. right we'll move to the next we only a couple more to show i think and that's it for these but i'll show you this one because now we can go back to something rose said earlier about the the seasons and how they work and such so i modified this to represent that and synced it with our seasons video so you can actually see how the in my head <laughs> the spring, summer, autumn, winter catered for here rotating counterclockwise while the other items are rotating clockwise. You know, these these names on these ones rotating clockwise. I'm not sure what they you know, do they represent stars, constellations? I have no idea because I don't know what these names are. You know, I won't give them got one give this image to me and I just work with it and made it do this. So I thought the best thing to do with having the seasons and such on is sync it with our uh, seasons video. But you know, you know, this is just one design of many that show the seasons and mechanics going on. You know, you're looking at mandalas, the the, the Nazca mandala. Every country that's got mandalas, they all they all represent how the world works. You know, the gates in the north, south, east, and west. You're going to see them on all the mandalas, and it's just more stories of the same over and over. <laughs> So it's a nice, uh, it's a nice finish to it. I made us our own little sigil, <laughs> just with this uh, hangout. You see that FPV OC RTM, me, one conscience and rose tinted monocle. Yay! <laughs> so that concludes my screen sharing for the day. Stop that and go back to the panel. What do you think of that then, guys? Great stuff. Awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. Fantastic stream, huh? Yeah. I'm very, I'm very chill. Oh, another three hour stream. <laughs> Yay, yeah. Rose wants to share still real fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Rose. Right. Go right. ahead. Get your, get your screen ready and right. tell me when you're ready and I'll present you. Um, 
I want that and I want that and Well, it's not an enjoyable three hours, guys. It doesn't seem like three hours, does it? No, but my missed calls are telling me it was. <laughs> are you managing, Rose? I'm getting there. Where's my thing? Oh, uh, no, don't screen share. Yeah, you, you just showed the hangout link. We're going to have to end it, guys. Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> I think we better end it because the link went out there. So, yeah, better be safe than sorry. Yeah, I don't want to get a free month ban. Oh, she left. Okay. All right. Well, good stream. I will talk to you later. <laughs> yeah. Enjoyable stream. Excellent work, ladies. And we'll look forward to the next one. Hope you guys in chat enjoyed it. And we'll catch you in the streams or in another stream here. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.